Hey, yeah, Chris, I'm here. This is uh, the rammer. I'm going to have my video turned off because uh, I'm just in a room. I scratched my, I got uh, sawdust in my eye doing woodworking yesterday and I had to go to the optometrist yeah, Chris, today and I got a little scratch. So light sensitive today for the next few days. I got to put antibiotic and steroid in my eye. I scratched my, I got uh, sawdust in my eye doing woodworking yesterday and I had to go to the optometrist today and I got a little scratch. So Thank you. So I'm also going on mute, but I'll unmute when I need to talk, just so I don't bother anyone. Hey. What's up, guys? Camera here. All right. I'll jump in and out too. I'm mute. Just so you guys know, I'm just spectating. I've actually already solved the puzzle. What? Yes. <laughs> Besides, I like to do my puzzle. I like to, to take my time and enjoy my puzzles. I don't uh, <laughs> like uh, racing this competition, but I'll, I'll watch you guys do it. I am also just spectating. Oh, yeah, I don't no. see any puzzles. <laughs> so, no pressure. Where, where's the puzzle at? Because <laughs> I didn't want to have the puzzle. <laughs> I've, I've got one. It's, okay. it's in a bag store. I assume it's in I there. Have. I was supposed to get puzzles today, but um, the USPS is having a sorting issue. So <laughs> they sent they sent my wanderer uh, through Vegas all the way to California, and then sent me a, a notification today saying, "Hey, you can pick it up. It's available." You know, the USPS is only open until three, and I got that at noon, and it's. 250 miles away so ah. i'm like nah i'll just wait and see what happens <laughs> so my wanderer went to wandering oh man oh nice yeah. but i have no puzzles now so i was i'm new and i already solved the two puzzles i own so oh. waiting on shipments what's that that one's a good one you'll enjoy it yeah, yeah i have the lotus and the clue box that's about it hey i got a clue box right here yeah that was a it's the only one I know of, the one I got from Germany when they first came out. Yeah, they have the same one. Yeah, is that Da Vinci box on Etsy the same thing, just called a different name? It's, yeah. I think so. A couple of guys have talked about that. Somebody uh, was taking some uh, yes, sir. Some stealing some IP. I'll just get it later. I've seen their new one, which is like Davy Jones Locker. Looks cool. Okay. Yeah, it does. It looks different. Oh. I've got, got dinner delivered. Look at this. <laughs> I don't know when I'm supposed to eat it. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, there's there's Chris. <laughs> look at this guy. He doesn't look like he's ready to solve a puzzle, though. Can't hear you, Chris. I'm here now. Hey, it's two of us, right? Hey, Chris. Yeah. Hey, is there more? Hey, Chris. Look at that. All right. Hey, Chris. So, can you guys hear me? Oh, now we can, yeah. Oh, there we go. Sweet. I'm jumping right, yeah, I'll be, uh, I'll be joining a little bit late. My um, my wife, we are on a play day right now, so. Oh. 
so I'm just here with my little one. Sorry. I thought you scheduled I, this thing. I did. <laughs> and I was like, hey, sweetheart, I got a thing at seven. She's like, no, you don't. <laughs> no, you don't. Uh, so, yeah. Well, right now it's just going to be a one-on-one -on -one solve, it looks like. So. <laughs> I like it. Oh, man. All right, cool. I'll be uh, I'll be joining on in here like 20 30 minutes so I'll I'll be I'll be tagging in later so All right, well have fun. All right, you guys have fun. Wait, before you go, how many people are supposed to join, do you know? Uh we have about 14. All right. Yeah. I didn't know how long I should wait for these guys. Yeah, give it like 5 What's minutes. What's the I mean, it's kind of just a just a whatever kind of like a whatever evening, so just Yeah. Just to see people and yeah. It's true. What's the we'll puzzle see. you're working on? What are y'all solving? Right now we're solving lockout the oh, okay. um yeah, oh, I just almost AC. I don't know the full lock or the it's Andrew? Andrew Coles. Andrew Coles. Yeah, that's it. So over in the UK. Um, yeah. So yeah, I give it like five minutes, but yeah, I'll give you guys a call back later. Sounds good. All right, enjoy, Vince. So so a, a clue box and a lotus. Those are the uh, your first two. Is that what you said? Yeah. Well. No, last Christmas my aunt sent me a Hanayama cast news, mm -hmm. and I thought that was kind of clever. Like I'd never seen that solution in a puzzle before. Now I see it all the time, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I had heard about the lotus. It had been on my radar. It was one of those like uh, you know like unicorn things. I didn't think they were still around. I would see him talking about it, and then a few weeks ago, I'm not. I think his name's Mike. He's puzzling times in here. Oh, yeah, Mike, yeah. Q on Reddit. He was like, yeah, we got lotuses in stock at Mr. Puzzle. So I uh, ordered one, and uh, I got it pretty quick. And I spent about three days solving it, kind of like all three phases. I was working, you know, I would just fiddle with it, put it down, and I didn't really have time. I was just doing it during my day job. And... Uh, I finally solved it, but right before I solved it, I spun it off of my glass table. So I'd been spinning clockwise and it inches forwards, you know, I didn't mm -hmm. wrap my head around this. I'm <laughs> from magic, admittedly, so we have a different viewpoint on things. So I spun it counterclockwise thinking, let's try it this way. Now I can do it without spinning it at all, you know, but I, I've been talking to Will about it. I can actually just move it and do it, but I spun it counterclockwise it spun right off the table i shot my leg out to try to like catch it it's only a foot right but i shot yeah. my leg out and then i just visioned in my head like metal shrapnel cutting through <laughs> my femoral so i jumped my leg back like this it hits the ground i have ceramic floors so it dented the corner i'm dismayed i'm over here like oh. <laughs> you know, it doesn't look perfect anymore right so i still solve it i get the coin right i put it back together and here's where i screwed up now i can slide it all around i can do all the things i hope i'm not spoiling anything for anybody <laughs> i'm pretty sure this is a classic puzzle and y'all have seen it before so i'm sliding around doing all my stuff it's like lock picking a gun slide right so i'm doing all this but admittedly then it froze in that one position where the uh, spring-loaded rod can lock it and you have to kind of get it loose again and i thought it was because i dropped it so I'm over here just like banging on it, trying to get it back into position. And I bent something. Well, no. So I didn't hurt it at all. What ended up happening was I read somewhere on a, 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 a blog. Like I didn't bang it like with a hammer or nothing. But I'm like trying to tap it back in place. Nothing's happening, right? So I go look on a blog post and someone was like, well, you know, if you've already solved it, Will says, pull that black pin, it'll just fall all apart. So I was like, <laughs> oh, okay, well, let me try that. So I pull the black pin out while it's in that mid position. And then I put the pin back in. It'll never come out of lock position now. <laughs> it went to locked and now it opens up like this much and it won't do anything else beyond that. So I bought another mm -hmm. one. And I so a week, a little week later, I get that one. <clears throat> I solve it. And at this point, Will had been emailing me back and forth. And he had kind of got, I think he'd kind of got the feeling that I was trying to like get the solution out of him. Oh, he doesn't like that. Right. And because I was only cracking it like partially open, I think he thought I couldn't solve it. Right. So finally, I'm like, dude, it, it's, it's got to be broken. And he doesn't want to hear that. Right. And so finally, he's like, what do you expect? It fell on the floor. So I was like, OK, I'm going to stop bothering him right now. I got the other one. I get the other one. I solve it. And I send him a video of that. Just kind of like, you know, here, I, I know what I'm doing with it. So then he's like, hey, that's good, but you can do better. Da, 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 da. 
And he's like, so I guess the other one is broken. <laughs> so he finally accepted that I might know if the other one was broken or not. And he's like, well, send it. I'm curious. And uh, then he challenged me to a three minute solve. So that's when I figured out how to solve it without spinning it. And then I sent him that uh, video. It was like two and a half minutes. And he was like, oh, this is beautiful. I love it. I want to show my friends, but you can do better. He's like, don't send me any more videos, though. I, I, I believe in you. <laughs> <laughs> so that's kind of like where we left it. So. I should change my name here, I guess. I'm literally just about to ask. I'm not sure if I've seen that name in the uh, Discord before. <laughs> I'm using my using my uh, my work's Zoom meeting here, so we could have up to a uh, hundred people in here. I think. I think we're almost there. What's going on, Tito? Hey, how's it going? Are you participating in the solve? Nah, I'm just here. Oh gosh, come on! <laughs> I have it. Send it to me. I'll do it. We've got we've got two of us. We got a one on one right now. Right. Yeah, there's a bigger crowd than there is people solving. I like it. Yeah. Um, I got on the list like three days after everybody else. So that's like a five month delay, I think. Yeah, probably. I was I was surprised at how quickly it shipped though. In the UK. You know what you guys need? Uh oh. There's a washing machine. That's what you. <laughs> that's what I you do need. That to this, man. <laughs> I've got the only one. Like it doesn't. Tease. It doesn't work at all. It's uh, no. it's terrible. Um, <laughs> we'll be on the list anyway. Yeah, no, I'm still. I'll still charge people for it. Uh, <laughs> I don't. So is it me and uh? I don't even know what it is. What, what's your real name over here, Rigoletto? Uh, Jason. Jason, are you the you're, you're the one that has it, right? Is it me and no, you? I oh, it was the Rammer. Rammer has it, right? Rammer. I've already solved it. I've already solved it. <laughs> Wait, so it's, <laughs> it's, it's a one versus no one. This one. Was Linux even here? He stopped in for a minute. He's uh he double booked himself for a play date apparently. He's on the one that's, that's his so idea. Funny. This was his idea. Yeah. Um, Man, we, could, we could also just kill some time and wait for him if he said he was going to be on at 20. We could kill some time. I do have this dinner over here I could eat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So that's that's killing time with. Nice. Oh. Last time, we had a good crowd for the uh, the symmetrical cross. I don't know if anyone's yeah. done that one. Uh, yeah, that was, a, that was a tough one. It was. <laughs> I've got to be honest. I haven't put it back together yet. It's been sitting on my desk disassembled. It's... <laughs> Did it help knowing aluminum cross at all going into it? Um, Not really. Okay, interesting. I, I mean, if you get the yeah. idea of crosses work, then. Uh, but I, I don't know if the mechanics were. I don't know. I think it was enough different to say it was a completely unique experience. That's good to know, though. This is my opinion. Yeah, I mean, you can kind of see what you have to do just by looking at it. You know, the cross is in two pieces and there's two rods going through. So it's like, I got to move some rods out of the way and then it'll come apart. So that's the gist of it. Um, so apart from that, yeah, doing, uh, they're, they're, they're different. I had, I had done aluminum cross and it did not help me. I don't think. <laughs> yeah, that's good enough. Brandon, tell us how your uh, your first uh, launch has gone for you. Like, what's been the the stuff like? What have you learned? What have you? What will you never it's, do again? It's been good. I tell everyone that I hate list, so now I join list um, just to put other people through the same pain. But now I think the biggest thing was just uh, when I first like designed it. I you know I put a picture of it on the on the Discord and. I thought maybe I'd sell like 25 of them or something like tops. So I put in an order for 25 <laughs> like ahead of time. And then everyone was like, Hey, I want this. So the list grew to like 45. So I'm like, I've got to cancel the list now. Cause it's just, it's kind of unmanageable. Um, so I canceled the order and just like, I'm going to order a hundred. I'll sell the 45 and I'll just do the other ones publicly. And they, uh, yeah, they sold in like 30 minutes or so. So now I've got the pieces for a hundred more uh, on the dining room table right now. My wife's been painting them. So <laughs> I was, I think that was the biggest surprise was like how big, and that was mostly just through the discord, like how many people would be interested in it. Yeah. Um, yeah you get a couple of really good reviews. I'm sorry. Go ahead. 
Oh, no, I was just saying it's a good problem to have. You know? It is. <laughs> um, I also probably priced it too cheaply in the first batch, so I did increase the price. Sorry for anyone who hasn't you know bought one yet, but <laughs> I, the amount of time Shucks. that went into it was a uh, was yeah, a lot. Yeah. I don't blame you. I mean, the amount of time slash the great packaging, like, I, yeah, I'm still kind of more than that, for sure. It's interesting watching y'all do this because, so, in the world of magic, I have about a dozen products, and they're, that, I always thought of magic as a very, here, I'll put myself up, you can see me talking, as <laughs> a very niche community. So, if I sold 30,000 copies of a DVD, right? that's a major, major success in magic, right? That'll get you calls from David Blaine and stuff to like help him with a TV show or something. And then you'll make another product and you'll sell like 500, you know? And so <laughs> it's like a big range and you can't bank on it at all. But I thought it was like the smallest, probably niche community of like people creating products and putting them out there until I found puzzling. <laughs> and I see you guys you're like making like $500 puzzles that you do a hundred of them you know and yeah so I, I'm actually talking to someone in here about an idea I had that's puzzle it's a se sequential discovery thing uh talking to core about it but we'll see what happens with that well there's 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 core now yeah I'll, here? I'll leave it there <laughs> <laughs> I'm here I'm here can people hear me that, well, I hear you yeah. The real question is, do you have a knockout and have you solved it yet? I I don't. Nobody <laughs> <laughs> <he> does. <laughs> I'm the only one so far that has it in hand and has not already solved it. That's funny. Chris, uh, Chris, Chris stopped by. He said he'll check back in and uh, hopefully soonish. Um, until then, we're just killing some time. Yeah, I'm just over here kind of socializing while I build some puzzles so you do that <laughs> just gonna build one of those oh, see what i'd show y'all just so you have something to to watch behind the scenes yeah you know, in case you want to show off your your locks while you're solving it at least you get <laughs> a look at these colorful things i'm putting together <laughs> well that looks fun <laughs> the assembling, yeah, the uh, the anzo, I actually kind of enjoyed putting them together. The sanding and lacquering, I do not enjoy. But once that's done, just assembling is uh, well, it's a little bit relaxing. Well, auction, you don't have to. It, <laughs> that's true. It uh, it's too late. I promised him there wouldn't be any more that were unpainted. I made a promise. <laughs> He was, he was like, no screws, seven hundred dollars, please. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've, well, I've got a clear one. Um, I was thinking about throwing that into the the guy that bought the one that didn't have the paint, and then I decided not to. <laughs> I was like, I'll keep it. Destination Chroma. I forgot the stand. Twenty dollars more. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, to to it's hard, you know, when you're prototyping when you can't see if the pieces are moving or not. So I, you know, I always make a clear one just to I can like, yep, yeah, that pen is stuck or that's moving the way I wanted it to. Is everyone um, here done, Ansel? I have. No. I have but, not. No. I have not. Okay. <laughs> I have not. Because I have, I have questions. <laughs> okay. <laughs> everyone like, everyone like, cover yeah. your ears. Yeah, they... I'll private back to you. <laughs> there. Uh, Tito, if you haven't seen the inside pictures, Brandon can send them to you there. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. I do. You don't mind yeah, just cool. send them over. Because I thought I had an idea of what was going on, and then I was like, nope. Yep. I got blown Same up. Me. The best is right next to me. I can't show it because there's too many people that haven't solved it. But you know, I get the laser cut pieces, and it just like a, it's a whole sheet of wood with like the uh, paper like sticker to it. So I have to peel all the pieces out. So I've got like you know it's four different layers. So I've got the front and the back, and then there's a, I won't say too much about what's inside, but <laughs> a couple of the layers. There's lots of pieces of wood that I have to kind of glue together so i've got them all stacked up over here in the in the proper shape and orientation um so i could show you what that looks like but uh, it kind of ruins the surprise for everyone <laughs> um it's a it's a 
it's a fun process to put them together. The other thing that surprised me, you know, the, when I first, I made, when I was pretty convinced that the prototype was like done, I went ahead and made five of them just cause I'm like, I don't want to just make one again. Um, so I sold those four and then I had to make a, a slight change, but putting five together didn't take that much time. And I tried to extrapolate like how long it would take to do a hundred. And it was, it was daunting. <laughs> like when you have all the pieces out, it's like, oh gosh, I bit off more than I can chew. I would imagine the more steps you have in a puzzle like that, the more pieces, you know what I mean? Like the more yeah. devious or involved, the more tunnels and latches and little things you have to just like, I, I can't imagine like Rex his puzzles when he has mm -hmm. to place those down. Cause I'm sure there's all kinds of crazy going on in there. Yeah. I haven't, I haven't, uh, I haven't done a Rex one yet. I've got two ordered now though. So that'll be fun. We have five on order. So <laughs> one day I'll I get them. Like them man. <laughs> I, I hope I do too. You know, <laughs> Otherwise, I'll keep two and I'll sell the rest for what I got them for to someone that wants them. I'm not trying to make money off of any of this, so. but I don't need like a pile of puzzles either. I have a Savannah cat and she'll break all of them. So <laughs> I have like a special area just for them. There, uh, there are those puzzles where you get them. And you're like, man, it was similar to uh, Ansel, where you're like, that's all it costs. That was. <laughs> It did look inexpensive because I saw it going for like sixty bucks or something on the. Yeah, it was sixty. I've, I've upped it to eighty, but then I was surprised at the auction prices. Like afterwards, probably like a hundred and something, two hundred. They were yeah, they were like two hundred, like two thirty. How does that make you feel as a designer? I was always curious about that. I was. Uh... I was told beforehand, like some people, you know, were having conversations like price it right, make sure you keep making them or else, you know, people are going to sell them for a lot of money that you don't get. But I was like excited, like people are willing to pay this much. Like <laughs> It was kind I'm of validating, curious. like, you know, uh, I'm curious about you guys. Like as a magic creator, one of the worst things you can see is like your name, your product and revealed or like solved or explained or anything like that. Right. It defeats the whole point of selling it you know and uh but i see it there's a lot like there's some puzzles you won't find a video for like angel box there's no video out there of angel box and i feel like that's uh reverence to the creator there like oh we're not gonna put that out there but how do you feel like you brandon as a puzzle creator like if there's a video of ansel being solved like a chris ramsey or something do you feel like that deflates the value of your puzzle or do you want it to be out there where no one has a solution and the first person to figure it out is like the winner mentally or something like i don't know what the philosophy is there um i so i got into this basically from chris ramsey so i can't like yeah. hate on people hate solving on it, yeah. i also do solve videos myself so i definitely can <laughs> <laughs> um and honestly, I'll probably send him one uh, if he doesn't end up buying one on his own because I think it'd be awesome to... the video. Yeah, I think that would be. Yeah. Um, I mean, right now, I kind of... Like I said, like I sold out of the first batch. I don't know. I'm making 100 right now. I don't know if those will sell out. I mean, eventually they will, but... I would think, I think it's contrary. Like in Magic, if it's got a really devious, like strange, like application or solution, it'll actually scare magicians away. They'll be like, oh, I don't want to risk that. But if, if with the puzzle, I would imagine if Chris Ramsey's solving it and there's like 50 moves to it, people are going to be like, well, I'm not going to remember that video. Well, I'm going <laughs> to buy it now because I know it's yeah. intricate. You know what I mean? I would say with I mean, Chris Ramsey, it's definitely a marketing effect. It's going to multiply yeah. sales. That yeah. one you don't mind. I mean, you want him to. To show it, yeah. I mean, if if you're if you're interested in selling puzzles, if you're interested in sharing with, you know, a, a niche group of collectors, and you're only just you're just doing it as a hobby, and you don't want care if you just break even, then yeah, it doesn't maybe not want him to show it. But if you want to sell puzzles, you want him to yeah, show it. the exposure. And I think the people that would buy it and would potentially ruin the surprise for like aren't gonna watch the video anyway. Like you see it all the time in the Discord I'd, when there's a new video I'd and people are like, I'm Lotus. not watching it. <laughs> yeah, I'd seen the Lotus video, but I didn't remember any of it by the yeah, time I owned one. Yeah, I bought it and I stayed away from it at that point until I got it, yeah. It seems like that that Lotus is everybody's gateway into it. And I, I feel like yeah. around that time, I, I stopped watching it. <laughs> <laughs> I think Lotus I was the first video that like video. showed up in my YouTube suggestions honestly and i was just like oh what's this and uh, i watched it and then i still bought the puzzle because i forgot 
I, I'd watched so many other ones and I just forgot. Yeah, it's funny. Yeah. I helped uh, help design parts of Turtle Trip, mostly art, um, and working with the. Uh, uh, he sent me um, like transparent cutaway like CAD screenshots so that I could align the art with certain mechanical parts on the inside. And I, when I got one, I still didn't remember how it worked. Wow. <laughs> I was like, I just, I just, I just did this. That's, like, I was just working on this. How do I not? I, yeah. <laughs> I think he changed it a little. I think, I think like the side I was working on, I think he ended up like turning it 90 degrees or something. Cause like, <laughs> it didn't look like what I was expecting when it came. I was like, I was like, wasn't this part supposed to be over here? So I think that's he, he rearranged the guts a little. That's why I haven't bought the Dan Lock yet, because admittedly, I remember one single step of the solution. And until I can't remember that I remember that, I'm not going to buy it. I'll forget okay. it. There'll be something okay. going there to take its place. So, I've got a B Lock I can sell you if you want that one. Oh, wait, who's talking? Brandon. <laughs> um, yeah, but honestly, I, I, uh, I'm not a big fan of the B Lock, so I, I almost feel bad selling it. <laughs> I take they're not that devious. The B locks and the uh, the hokey cokey or whatever, like they're all similar. Like pull a rod out of a key or something like that. That kind of stuff. Very different from Dan Lock, I would say. Yeah, less steps. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's hard to say anything without. Yeah. Saying. <laughs> right. No, I get you. Yeah, I'd almost separate those two. I I, hmm. I was in the same category. I absolutely loved Dan Lock, but B Lock Two was like, eh, that was it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I feel like I remember the Dan Lock being very involved, and the other ones, from what I remember seeing, weren't really as involved. So, hey, yeah, I got the Wanderer cool. coming. I want to yeah. see something cool. Hey, there, there she is, the nuclear there's, there's, oh, yeah. reactor, the prototype. Uh, pretty much final um, at this point. I've already printed off a bunch of parts, waiting on some other materials to come in. Hopefully within the next couple of days. But <laughs> and you can see the the pieces are pretty. Uh, well, there you go. To give you a little side view on those. You can see they're all varied. Um, and then I went ahead just a couple days ago and prototyped out uh, set number two of pieces. <laughs> You're Which working too to fast. Quite <laughs> yeah, the expansion set. Yes. So this oh, is um. What's the objective? So this is the uh, plutonium set, and this is the uranium set. Mm. Nice. <laughs> my my theming, carrying through, and the naming and everything. And, I like that uh, square and. Yeah, yeah, these ones are all very square, and uh, the other ones all angled. But these ones um, kind of have diagonals involved, so they're a little uh, trickier. Um, and I don't want to show too much because uh, uh, you might start to like, you know, start to like put the pieces together in your head. But you got these. Uh, uh, William's not here, so don't worry about little, it. Little little <laughs> rams, basically, uh, with a uh, rod sticking out of them of different heights. There's three different heights. That's not really a spoiler. You can actually see right here a piece with all three, and there's three different heights of little recesses in here, and you gotta put it in. And it's got a sit flush. So like if I tried to put this piece in, I'm trying to find like right there. As you can see, but it doesn't go in all the way. So the lid won't go on. But if you get all the pieces mm. in a place where they'll go lid in. Like, uh, no, uh, no, 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 no. Oh gosh, I'm trying to. There I need one so that's like, like themed There's just a couple show. pieces in there just to hold it up. You see the, the lid will go on nice and flush. And that's the objective nice. is just to try to pack all the pieces of one set in and then get the uh, lid to go on flush. And um, I would say, I don't know, I, I had someone solve this set pretty quickly. Um, I imagine uh, it's not too difficult, but uh, the hope is to have, um, with this one being a little more difficult, the hope is to do the next set be even more difficult. Uh, so it kind of has an ascending difficulty. Um, are there really open uh, spaces? Um, are there open spaces? So no. So so every so it'll fill the entire grid, but just because a rod is only 
uh, since there's a one, two, and a three, just because it's it's one doesn't mean it has to go in one hole. It could go in a two or uh, a three. Okay. So is there only one solution? Um, yes, there's only one solution for each of these sets so far. Nice. Uh, I have not, I I have not done the math on the second set to make sure, but I'm ninety percent sure there's only one solution with the way I designed it. Um, it's kind of tricky. You'll 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 see when you get it. I don't want to <laughs> say too much because there's kind of a surprise involved. Yeah. Uh, that makes it a little. Uh, I, I'm so Harder. torn because, like, I want to tell people about the uh, about the the cool thing about this, but mm. I also don't because when I tested it with some friends, they when they realized what was going on, they were like, "Oh, that's clever," and I was like, uh, so "Yeah, like a gimmick." Gotcha. Yeah. So um, <clears throat> I'm hoping to leave it a surprise, unless people cool. complain and say, "I wish I would have known ahead." <laughs> I'm just gonna keep it a surprise and mm. put it out there. It'll be fun. What are you hoping to release? Um, well, see, I'm waiting on these materials to arrive so I can finish um, the pieces. Um, and that will be... Um, they're claiming it's going to show up on the 23rd, but you know how shipping is these days. So hopefully it shows up on the 23rd, and hopefully... It's tomorrow, uh, though. Like, yeah, hopefully. <laughs> it's tomorrow. It is tomorrow, yeah, so hopefully. Mm -hmm. uh, but so hopefully within a few days, if I can get these darn things... Uh, rolling i mean like i've got the listing ready and everything i just you know i mean decided on the prices and everything i think the uh the expansion sets are only going to be like five bucks just for the pieces so like you buy the base set it comes with this set and then you know i might have two or three expansion sets by the end of the year or whatever um and then you can uh you know throw those in with other orders if you really like the puzzle you know it'll get a little replay value out of it I like it. Yeah. yeah, each set's going to be wildly varied. So, I mean, already these two sets are already pretty different. Um, well, I've got some pretty evil uh, plans for set, <laughs> for set three. That'll, uh, that'll be... Um, it'll be Radium. Have you ever Radium played Subnautica? <laughs> There's a game um, called Subnautica. Yeah, 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 it's kind of got a Subnautica vibe to it, too. Oh, like yeah? the way they're angled, like elements and stuff like that. You know, yeah. Sharp angles, slight angles. I was going to say, <clears> when <throat> you put a couple pieces in, it looked like a battleship. That's oh, what yeah. I said earlier. <laughs> battleship vibe. Yeah, yeah, you should make a battleship theme one, too. <laughs> That's not a bad idea. You got you to gotta blow up all the ships, too, on top of getting them in the right spot. <laughs> that that would actually be great, actually. Opens like up uh, the bottom. Like, uh, man, that would actually be a great, like, think fun game. You got to, like, lay out the ships, and but then you have to also lay out tangrams that sink them all. That'd be great. <laughs> There's so many little ideas like that that I have. Uh, I keep a little journal. <laughs> nice. So hopefully we'll see them. And you make them so quickly. Like, I feel like... Oh, yeah, I mean, 3D printing, yeah. you can uh, rapidly prototype pretty fast. It's uh, very surprising. I need to get me one of those. Yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong. Sometimes sometimes the uh, when you're printing them in nice quality, it takes a while. And you know what? It's not even a matter of size. It's a matter of complexity. It's just how much it moves, you know? If it's a lot yeah. of straight lines, you, you're lucky, you know, because that'll go a lot faster. But these are the weird curvy pieces. I mean, it took an, at least an additional half an hour more than the, than the straight line pieces. <laughs> I got into that whole FPV racing drone thing for a while, oh, yeah. but because you destroy them so easily, <laughs> you have to be like into 3D printing to really kind of keep that hobby going. And that's when I backed out because the whole CAD thing and designing it. When I was in college, I got a degree in like new media and I had to do like my oh, uh, 3D studio. There you go. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> 3D Studio actually. Max. And uh, I had to take those courses and I sucked so bad. <laughs> I was good at like animating and framing them, you know, like the, the animations, but the drawing. Yeah, I'm not a sculptor. Uh, <laughs> I, I got yeah, that actually, dreams and it's like. Mm. I actually went through almost the whole program. Did not quite get the degree in it before I switched to computer science. Oh, man. Yeah, yeah I got it was a really new when I went into in it, New so. Media School of Informatics at IU. I did it for TV production, though. And then I graduated in 07, and the writer's strike happened in Hollywood. So yeah. for a year and a half, there was no jobs. And if you've been out of college like two years and you're not doing what, you're, what you started off to do, nobody cares. So uh, that's why how I got into the magic and making my own products. I had to use it for something. So I, I looked online. I was like, 
this was my old mentality. I was like, where can you, where would, where do you find DVD productions that sell well that are on a low budget, you know, Martin, it was, there was like these $60 DVDs that were 30 minutes long and they were all like magic. Like I did like a search <laughs> and they were all like teaching magic. And I was like, well, I don't know anything about magic. <laughs> so I bought a whole bunch of magic. I spent like two weeks locked in a room. I taught myself a whole bunch of stuff, started making YouTube videos about it and got invited to Vegas to perform, nice. filling mm -hmm. in for people. Like if you've ever seen America's Got Talent, the uh, Smoothini, the ghetto Houdini, mm -hmm. that saw, he had a TV show and he <laughs> invited me out. I think he just needed a ride back. <laughs> he was like taking a greyhound but i came back and and he was so flighty out here that they kind of took me and kind of plugged him into what they had kind of lined up for him so i just kind of got in both feet and after a few years i had credibility enough to have you know the magic products then so that's what i did for a while until uh you kind of run out of ideas with magic inventing illusions is not like a fountain that springs eternal you know you're gonna there's only so many illusions that can be done unless you want to rehash and just take people's ideas and <clears throat> let me put it in a cell phone instead of a you know a book you know <laughs> then you're just putting out the same thing that's already been out so it's hard how to be you, new how do you pronounce your name is it the same one you go by mm -hmm. on the on the on the on the discord it's pronounced loci cross uh no, but it's just I. Oh. Yeah, loci. The capital <laughs> I is for the loci. Uh, that's actually yep, a Smoothini story. We were driving through Colorado and we were going into Utah <clears throat> and we were about halfway through it. And I said, hey, I said, I don't think I want to be Loki. He's like, what? <laughs> And I said, I think I'm gonna do low Kai. And he looked at me and he goes, man, you better figure it out <laughs> like a day away. And I was like, yeah, I think I'm, I think I want to be different and I'll have this like unique thing that'll make people remember it or whatever. And what's funny is in, like any contract I've gotten, any review I've gotten in a magazine or a write up or anything, or you can tell the difference between people that give a shit and people that were just like on the hype train for a second. Cause I had a product called facts that was like stupid popular. Uh, if you've seen the movie Now You See Me, mm -hmm. uh, Morgan Freeman exposes my effect at the beginning of the movie. So <clears throat> the, and that's intentional, like I got paid, but uh, the whole forging the signature right in front of the person and then hypnotizing them to forget and then the cards put somewhere. Well, like you don't have to hypnotize people. You can do that right in front of it. Like I can have you sign an object and two <laughs> seconds later, I can have a copy of that object with your signature on it. And then I'll use that copy, do magic with you for like five minutes while this, the real object is being put into some kind of nefarious scheme. And I had it where it was all in the hands with the spectators. So there's a trick where you, the, the spectator signs a card, the magician puts it in the middle of the deck and says, oh, something corny like, oh, it's the most ambitious card you've chosen. Well, why is that? Because it rises to the top. And then they flip over the top card, you sign cards on the top. They'll do it like five times in a row until you just get tired of it. And then they go to the next table. So <clears throat> I made it to where you could have the person take their own card, shove it in there, snap their finger. Now it's on the top. You take that shit from them. Like, pardon my language, but you take it from <laughs> them. You're like, hey, how did you do that? Like, you're baffled by what they did. So you give it back to them, tell them to do it again, like you would do to a magician. So they do the whole trick again. And then you just destroy that thing. And it ends up back in the deck again. So like if they were a real magician, it wouldn't matter if I destroy your props. You know, that kind of, you play the spectator and they're the magician. But the utility of it allows you to put like, uh, Siro Takayama did the whole pushing the card through the aquarium with it. Uh, David Blaine used it with Harrison Ford. So when he, when Harrison Ford said, you know, pointed to the orange and they cut it out of the orange and he gave it to him and Harrison mm -hmm. Ford looked at him and goes, get the out of my house <laughs> and he was dead serious that's that true everybody uses the method now so it was very popular but like on the side note you might see this as a creator yourself i spent five and a half years developing a trick that uses psychology on your on your eyes called attribution substitution and inattentional blindness to take a four a card tear it into four parts and just put it back together like that without any cover David or David Copperfield uses cover. Everybody uses cover. That's like throwing a blanket over a woman, cutting her up, 
pulling the blanket off, showing her apart, putting it back over, putting her back together, and then pulling back apart, right? You don't, there's no magic there. It's a before and after. So this trick had been around for like a hundred years. Nobody was doing it right. So I found a way with psychology to make it visually look like that's melting back together. The reviews are like, well, we know how he's doing it. We just don't see it. And I'm like, well, that's the point, that's the point. right? <laughs> <laughs> that's, just the, that's the whole point. And I spent five and a half years, I would buy a brick of cards every week and tear them to shreds, <laughs> practicing this thing to perfect it. We did a $500 contest with Murphy's Magic for the best video submission of it. I had two video submissions after a year. Just had to throw the contest out because <laughs> nobody wanted to try to learn. It was too, too much in their head. The point being, though, is I only moved like a thousand copies of that. And I spent five and a half years of every single day working out like how this thing could be perfect. And it was something that I goofed around with for like a year that just went boom. You know, you never can predict it. You know, what you think mm -hmm. in your own mind is like your masterpiece probably isn't you know, <laughs> in other people's eyes. They probably like something else, you know. Hmm. Is it too complicated? Like they just couldn't or didn't want to put the time in to learn it? Yeah, it was very difficult to do. Right. You know, it was called uh, Legacy. It was from a DVD called A Taste of Chaos. And I mean, I'll tell you, all I mean, if you see it on the web, uh, it's I'm holding two cards together. Well, here, I'll just grab a card and show you real quick. Do it. <laughs> Yo, what's up, Digibomb? Hey, how you doing? <clears throat> so the funny Even thing is I had, a, <clears throat> I had a bonus effect on here where I taught what I'm about to show you, basically. And this was stupid, simple, and way better. So, so like here... I'm just handling now i haven't done card tricks in a hot minute but this is two cards right now so this would just be like this now these are like kind of high-end cards so they don't fold too great you would pop it open like this fold it down make it look like you're folding it will scribos really got me because when i did the first lotus and cinema video he was like you're too forceful and you need to be gentle and i was like well look you know <laughs> i don't know how i how it came up but i was like well you know I feel like my hands are pretty precise as a professional magician, you know, and he goes, well, I didn't see any of that precision in your video. <laughs> Ooh, so, challenge. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so just to keep this one simple, you would have something like this. You take the card, you rip it. Mm. Obviously, I creased it nice and well. You would show it as four and then, you know, take the pieces, kind of fold them together. And now you have a stack of pieces, uh, take them, hold them like this. You never, the, the thing here is you never want something to leave the site, right? But if you take it just like that, right? You can maybe put it into the view of the camera. So then the card still back together that was pretty good and that's the <laughs> version of it without me going doo, 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 and doing the visuals because the camera sucks but uh yeah so you know it's a whole bunch of chicanery going on behind the hands you know a lot of moving stuff around but you got to make it look like you're doing what you're doing oh you know? hey guess what i just found by the way finally so, went through my room and there we go i found my cards man i knew they were in yeah. the <laughs> oh god you did it all these dang like magicians decks <laughs> those trick decks <laughs> and golly i got i got some nice bicycles sitting around mm. i got i got some i, I have I a, a lot of that stuff i actually taught people how to do magic as like a speech in a speech class just like really, really? simple tricks some really simple card tricks and uh i i, I taught them how to do this one where yeah. you, where you tell someone hey you gotta you gotta get the queen out of the nines right and they Oh, that's weird stuff. You pull it out, but it's a joker now. Mm -hmm. It's just a uh, stupid gimmick, but I love it. <laughs> so it's just such an easy thing to, to make. <clears throat> buy a I pack a, of cards from the Dollar Tree. <laughs> I spent a lot of time cutting up cards and crafting little weirdness with them, trying to come up with ideas of things to use. Uh, well, where's the guy that builds the puzzles out of the cards? We need, we need him in here. I know. Right? I know him. Yeah. I was surprised to see his name in there. He came out to Vegas and he started hitting me up and I was like, dude, I'm not in magic anymore, please. 
like <laughs> when I would go to conventions and stuff, I'd get like people come up to me showing me my own tricks and their hands would be shaking and stuff. And I get that, that that's supposed to be like an honor, but I'm not the mentality of the person. I get weirded out by that kind of stuff. <laughs> so I was like, nah, I'm just not really into attention, you know? So, but yeah, no, I, I know Eric Stevens is his yeah, name. Yeah, that's the guy. Yeah, yeah. He, there's a, a magician, a famous magician called Dirk Losander who floats tables around and crap, right? And he's he was married to uh, a female magician named Yuma Shimada, all right? Now, I know everybody in magic, sorry. So these are like people. <laughs> okay, so Yuma Shimada, she's a bit extreme. I don't really know how to put this one. I think Eric is married to her now. He like started hooking up with her over online. And then all of a sudden he kind of like went out to Vegas to live with her or something. Um, my experience with him is a little like, you know, some people are really strong on the self promotion and things like that. You know, some of us, we just do what we do until people notice, you know, there's different approaches to it, I'm sure. So but it wasn't my taste. I've yeah. had a lot of magicians rub me the wrong way. I'm not saying he's one of them. I'm just saying I've met a lot of magicians that would be like, hey, man, I heard you were looking for a roommate. And I'd be like, never <laughs> said that. And they'd be like across the country trying to find someone to live with in Vegas so they can kind of geek their way in. And I'm not. That <laughs> Sorry. This is the weirdest. Uh, I don't know if you know anything about cards. I mean, I'm sure you do. This is the weirdest deck I ever found found these at a yard sale they're magic decks but i just love the back pattern on them so yeah, that's bizarre. pretty cool pull them up a little closer though you got a light yeah. shine there yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah i'm getting hypnotized looking at yeah. it so strange <laughs> ray pattern something like that right luna that shimada why did i say yuna <laughs> luna that makes more sense anyways i didn't know any different <laughs> I want to know what's behind Digibomb back there. Is that just a lamp or is that something cooler than a lamp? <laughs> mm. It's like one of those Tesla coils from a distance. Yeah. Digital bomb. Did you, is that what it is? <laughs> You're on mute, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I ever show this, uh, show this uh, Chroma prototype in, in the server? I don't know if I did. Uh, some some dueling chroma here. You did. Yeah, I think I've seen that one. Actually, I just was I just dug this up. I've been cleaning out my room and trying to finish some puzzle, things. Puzzle or is that just yeah. some kind of like light? Refractor? Yeah, it's a puzzle. So it's a little it's a little stiff because I just, I just didn't print it quite right. I'm trying to find actually if I can get it to move, which would really need is like a white background behind it. Uh, I think I've got some printer paper around here somewhere. A sheet of that. I would use uh, this piece of paper, but it's got solutions written on it, so I wouldn't want to do that. <laughs> yeah, don't do that. One. There we go. So you can see it a little better that way. But uh... oh yeah, it's a little shuffled up right now. But uh, there were typically there would be four oranges, five reds, and five yellows like that. So the red and the yellow make the orange in the middle. And uh, there's three layers of tiles in here, uh, like that one you just saw me building. And uh, there's one missing, so you're able to move them around. I'm not sure if it's on this side, but it's missing on the one. Yeah, there it is. Okay. So you can see there's one missing here. Um, but on these 10 that are not shared, uh, the middle tile is locked in place. You can tell because there's like a little smaller tile in there. Um, but that does tell you what color they're supposed to be. So there's red small tiles there. But uh, you can see I can kind of move them around. And then if I get them in the middle here, I can push it up and flip it over and then mess with this side and then flip it over again. And you start to get all these color mixing going on. But uh, the it's just a little too loose in the middle because there's no support there. I'm a little too loose in the middle too. Is this like a fluid or something? <laughs> I got up to get a bottle of water and I think I missed a key oh, element here. Yeah, no, it's cool. I'm actually going to show you this one because it's a lot easier to see. It's a lot simpler. It doesn't have all the constraining mechanisms. So this one. Are um, these discs or just like they're, they're they're squares? They're tiles. Okay. Um, that slide around and there's three in each column except for the one that's missing one to allow it to slide around. So it's like a 15 puzzle or like yeah. a like a not nine, a nine puzzle. You know, an eight puzzle. If you want to call it that but it's Purple, got three layers and so it's actually orange. like three by three by three 
So you can actually push up and flip it over and then mess with the other side. And then you start to mix up all the colors. Just like that. And you see now I've got some greens in here and some oranges. It's uh when you hold it up to the light, it's a lot a lot prettier. I just don't really have a light I could use. Maybe it's generically they're called moving hole puzzles. Yes. It is a moving hole puzzle. And you can maybe kind of I dim that down a little bit and kind of see. I would try to break it so I could put it back together and then write order. Like this. <laughs> Well, I mean, um, I think they look great true. even when they're shuffled. So that's true. I mean, it's like stained glass. It does look like fun. Yeah, it's stained yeah, glass. You don't thing. really need to. I mean, I've trained myself how to solve them, but uh, but they're not they're not they're not simple. But but I mean, they're they're simple, but they're not easy. Let's put it that way. Yeah. So yeah. Or what's your? I probably use more like a fidget. Now. Say again. Sorry. Someone said something. Well, what's two your people said. What's your favorite one that you've done so far? Like, oh gosh. Well. Puzzles are just these, because <laughs> hmm. I have like, because I have like twenty different variations of this thing. Wow. <laughs> it's funny actually. Um, gosh, I really like my screwball. Gotta say, I really like it. Um, I, I think it's just got the most the most uh, bang for it. You know, what is a screwball. Uh, screwball. And I haven't bought one yet. <laughs> Well, I won't spoil anything uh, about the screwball, considering it's one of those puzzles that's... Oh, you're, is that the one with the ball that splits in half on your site? Um, yeah. I it's think a, I saw it. It's one of these. Maybe oh, the, nice. the Pokemon logo. logo. What is that? Uh, no, that's just my, uh, that's my, <laughs> my, my core mods logo there. Oh, I see. It's <laughs> a sticker to keep it from turning an and shipping. Yeah. So, yeah, if I... Great. Now, uh, I, now I want a Pokemon-themed one. Yeah, right. I haven't made a Pokemon <laughs> themed one. I made a Pokeball for a friend. I didn't sell it because obviously I don't want to get in trouble. Right. It was just for a birthday. Uh, um, but yeah. Nintendo don't play. Nintendo don't play. <laughs> no, I did make one. I'm sure I've got photos of it. Well, based on our discussion, I know that you don't even test the waters with any type of like. What were you worried about? Like somebody's coin that was like similar to something out there? like a theme or something i forgot it was like a space theme or something somebody's coin uh what are we talking about we're looking we're at chips about and coins we were and looking stuff. at chips and coins oh yeah. um yeah, that's no, smart yeah the, why even risk it yeah there was something oh man i can't even remember what it was now <laughs> i'm sure yeah, it, it would come space, back to me. i think yeah it was something space sure would come back to me if i thought about it. it was when we were talking about the were we on the call at the time or no, it was after that when we were looking yeah. at chips. chips. Right, yeah, 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 I do remember that. Gosh, it's not that I don't remember that, it's just that I don't remember that exact... No, neither do I. I remember it being something like space, and I remember you being like, well, I don't want to risk that, and I'm like, well, I'm pretty sure no one owns space. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was... Uh... Oh, no, you're right, it was a company. Or Cthulhu or something like that, yeah. No, it wasn't the, it wasn't the Cthulhu ones. The Cthulhu ones were fine. I, I would have used them if they were smaller, because those are cool. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, they were not small enough for for what we have in mind here. <laughs> yeah. but, have you guys uh, tried the hazmat cargo puzzle? Sorry, hazmat. No, but I've seen it. I've seen it, and I and I've seen the Chris Ramsey video on it. And I have to admit, as pretty as it is in wood, I really do love the original three D printed version where he made it look like a boat. I don't know if anyone's seen that, but. Uh, I only remember the biohazard one that had like the pistons and stuff in it. That one looked pretty cool. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That was like yeah. one of a kind one. It was though. like the escape box yeah. one. Was Something it the escape like room one? Or was it Oh no, it was like splatter painted and stuff. Oh man, I don't remember. it's there's been so many <laughs> one of those things run on the side in the background, you know, and yeah. I don't even pay attention to half of them. I just see them, you know, every once in a while while I'm doing something. <laughs> yeah, that's true. He's got a lot of them. I'm about to solve this lock over here, guys. I've got to be honest. It's just sitting over here, just like looking at me. <laughs> Remembering Chris said he'll he'll check in in like 20, 25 minutes. Yeah, Whatever happened to that guy? <laughs> <laughs> How hard can this thing be? So who who's at least one of you solved lockout, right? Who was that? Yeah, I've solved it. How is it? It's gonna be a quick solve, five minutes. No, I don't think so. I don't. I think <laughs> a poor choice for a solve off. Oh uh, yeah. 
That's it. That's what that's what Mike was saying. It sounded like he uh, didn't think it was a good idea. <laughs> it's my first time using Zoom. Can we like choose like two people and just show their screens, or is it like one or all? Yeah, can't you just click them? I don't know. I just did gallery view because yeah, that seemed to be the most fun. Uh, you can do pin video if you click the dot 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 on there. A little oh. ellipsis, in case anyone knows what that is. Yeah. That, that yeah. might that might keep them up front for you. I was gonna say I could I could show myself live, but that ruins it for everyone who doesn't have one yet. Be less fun. Ah, ah, I'm smiling over here. Things are happening already. Oh no, things are happening. How many do you have? Screwballs available right now. Can I go buy a screwball? <laughs> I, I I do have a few of them. I don't have every color pre-made, but I mean they only take a day or two to make, so I'm not ah. too worried. Yeah, I, I was... do have those one-off colors where I just like I made one and I was like, yeah, I don't think I'm gonna make this a color screwball, but then I just kind of had it sit sitting around. So I still have like the the brass one and the midnight blue, which uh, which are still uh, available. If those. You know, tickle your fancy. If you like those colors over some of the standard ones. Um, oh man, actually, I like the Woodfill ones. Actually, oh, the Woodfill ones are awesome for sure. I don't have any on me because they sell so fast. Uh, yeah, it was funny when you mentioned like how some of those pieces take thirty minutes to print and how that's a long time. And I'm like, when I'm doing this laser cut stuff, it's like a sixteen day lead time. So oh no, I mean. <laughs> like, uh... Oh, what I said was uh, it took like an additional 30 minutes. Additional 30 minutes. Right. The piece sets take uh, about an hour and a half to two hours, actually, because mm. they're so complicated. And like I said, they don't use up that much filament. They're just complicated. So I'll show my ignorance in 3D printing here. When you said two days to do a sphere ball, you're not talking about like one, are you? Uh, I'm talking about all the parts uh, and, and building it okay. as well. So not all print time. The, the prints probably about six hours total um i've got all the internal parts pre-printed because i pre-print a bunch ahead of time it's because the internal parts they don't change color it just depends what color they pick for the for the shell it just seemed like you'd have to have a lot of 3d printers going to like really i got two. some profit there <laughs> i got two so it's enough i mean i pre-print lots of stuff and and uh and then you know i just you know a, a day i don't have anything to do i just assemble things i got i got piles of things that, that still like fun, need to be assembled though. i got i gotta do a bunch of finishing on that you know i've got chromas all over the place right now <laughs> parts for them so brandon if you had a laser cutter it would only take about two to three minutes to cut a, a single yeah <laughs> yep um I'm, I'm i'm i need to buy one i just it's one of those things where there's like so many different options for them right well maybe there's not that many really but <laughs> well you can choose the cheap Chinese ones, um, which are very, they're cost effective. I mean, uh, but they are finicky. They're, they're hard to keep running. And then yeah. you got the other extreme. You can buy like the, the you know, the, the one that's not going to ever break down. It's finely tuned, but uh, it, they're a order of magnitude more expensive. Yeah. I think I'm going to end up on that side because I don't like finicky. Yeah. yeah. And, and, you know, you need cooling, you need space for it. You don't yeah. want the beams coming into your house. <laughs> they take up space. That's the other thing. We're considering uh, like selling the house we're in now. So I'm like, I don't know if I want to buy a giant laser cutter and find room in the garage for it. and then uh, Just to move it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they're not that big. Like we have a we have a, an actual letter press machine in our house right now, which weighs like 2,000 pounds. So. You know, I might uh, have to revise my answer a little. Um, about my favorite puzzle I've made. I mean, I love Screwball, but I, I also love this. Uh, this is definitely my favorite slide puzzle I've made. Just uh, look so at that one on your Etsy. It's called Discalculia. Yeah. I, I love playing with this one. So it's the same thing as like the colored ones, but it's numbered tiles instead. If I can actually get them to move. And you can see it just starts to kind of become a jumbled mess as you uh, start to move the tiles around. Um, but what's really fun about this one, or what I think is really fun, what really makes it my favorite, is the fact that you can kind of grip this little edge and spin the middle layer. And then you've got 90 degree rotated pieces in there that you start pushing up into the other layers. 
which is just uh, a nightmare. <laughs> it's a uh, it's a lot of fun. I love solving puzzles like this. This is like uh, well, that... I just uh, not to toot my own horn, but the, the <laughs> this was so freaking clever. I just was surprised that it that it worked like right out of the like right off the plate. Like my first prototype worked perfectly. Uh, it's really great, actually. I just put a little magnet in here, and it just locks onto the screws because I left the screws exposed on the inside, and I was surprised that that worked as well as it did. I thought I was going to have to build a complex clicking mechanism like a twisty puzzle, and it was just like, nope, magnet will do it. Works perfect. And I was just like, dang, that's that's lucky. You don't uh, see that every design. Oh, man, I shuffled it a little. <laughs> Where's my, where's my other three? Well, there's my other three. Definitely not Scott. Well, I just bought the last one on Etsy, so... <laughs> <laughs> uh, it'll be this one right here. Great. <laughs> I've, I've been meaning to make more. I've been trying to stock up all my uh, slide puzzles again. Actually, what happened, funny stories, some, some crazy collector came along and just bought literally one of everything from me basically on the side puzzles. <laughs> that's pretty good and i was like well okay and i was like um like so are you like uh Watching the puzzle up. giving these to people or wait did you guys free? give up on lockout <laughs> i i just i just started it um i'm the only one okay what's up guys hey what's up so I'm, I'm the, the only one with a copy. I'm the only one with it that hasn't solved it. So <laughs> I have it. It just I'm I'm not I'm not at home right now. So you know. I, uh, Are you finished yet? Uh, I'm not finished. I'm at that phase where I'm just gonna say it's broken. You know, I'm gonna. Yeah. <laughs> I've uh, I've done a first step. I'll say. By the way, my uh, improved one-piece uh, hacking puzzle, I, I spent a lot of time on it and didn't make progress. Mine actually did have an issue. Oh, no. Yeah, and so uh, I was really kind of freaked out. I was like, you know, I was like, man, no wonder I couldn't figure it out. And I was like, okay, we're after the 30-day limit. I'm sure he's going to still support me, but I was like worried about really it. Yeah. Oh, man, I'm actually having trouble solving this. <laughs> That's funny. At least I'm not um, alone having trouble solving the remembering, remembering my my tricks for solving this thing. How does it I feel to be uh to be known as the the egg guy? <laughs> it's <laughs> interesting, <laughs> for sure. I love those eggs. I've got to be honest. I haven't solved series the, two. I bought that what two months ago or something. And then the uh, and then the, what was it? The Strebos egg came out and stole all my thunder. <laughs> now you're yeah. just you're you're now a copycat, like, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, that's a five. Brandon, the good news is you're definitely beating Chris right now. <laughs> exactly, crushing that guy. He's probably at home solving it right now. <laughs> Well, seriously, tell us what you oh. what you see and what you've discovered so far. I don't. I uh, I think I would spoil it for anyone who. Okay. Okay. Um, I I can see why uh, why Mike thinks it would be a kind of a bad idea to to do this one in a live solve if everyone was showing what they were working on. I mean, it's the same thing with symmetrical cross. There's a step kind of early on that you have to do and kind of one person did it in the solve off and then everyone else is like oh okay i'll do that too yeah i um, i wasn't paying enough attention <laughs> <laughs> um i'll say i've uh i've gotten i've gotten a tool a tool has been found and i've done nothing since then and i feel like i'm just ruining everything So it's beating me up. Yeah, the next one of these, I or maybe not the next one, but I still we need to do a unstable eggs speed run. 
Mm, See, he can do it the oh, fastest. It. Oh, that took forever. That, and that was barely shuffled, so uh, it's a challenge. Yeah, how fast can you do the, your eggs? Oh, gosh, how fast can I do my eggs? Um, <laughs> you know, it's funny. Sometimes uh, I've gotten pretty good at consistently solving just about every egg except for that damn brass one. That brass one, sometimes I get it immediately. Sometimes I sit there for hours before it works, and I'm just like, "What? what's the difference? What did I do wrong? <laughs> I don't know. It's funny. I, yeah, I still don't know how I got that one to stand up. <laughs> that one was... Uh, I ended up uh, I ended up making some updates to that design to make it a little easier, actually, so to speak. Um, not that not that what you have is defective, but uh, depending on like when you got it, you might have like the version two version of it that like just makes it a little bit less of a pain in the butt. Like you don't have to like really carefully balance it like you mm. like you had to like now it's a little bit more like okay it's balanced we're good you know <laughs> like the other eggs are it's just it was so sensitive in the first version that like if you just tilted it just a little bit the wrong way even though it was ready it would still fall over and i was just like, ah, I, was just like I don't know if i like that i have to make a new version hey rigoletto did yeah. you ever find a tv case the puzzle the tv case oh my gosh so the guy um the story goes with that one uh, on the, the Facebook puzzle trade, uh, a guy happened to say like, oh yeah, I remember that one. It's got, a, it's in my collection, collection somewhere. So I, I reached out to him and said, are you willing to sell it? And you know, he, uh, he's like, yeah, um, sure. It sounds good. We agreed on a price and he, his storage was, I think he said it was like 45 minutes away from his house. He's like, in about 10 days, I'll be out there. I'll go uh, snag it and, you know, send it off to you. I'm like, sweet. <laughs> 10 days comes and he's like, I can't find it anywhere. I don't know. Uh -huh. And I, I, it's just the story of that puzzle. I, I don't know what it is about that one. It's not. It's cursed. It's, yeah, it's not rare because people like absolutely love it. It's just rare because like it wasn't, it wasn't super popular. But when, as soon as I started showing interest, I can't find a single version of that or a single copy of that thing anywhere. And what is it? It's called TV Case, uh, and I can't, I can't, I butchered the. Uh, the designer's name there i can't find any information on this guy no contact form or anything uh but it's really cool packing puzzle i'll, I'll drop it into the, the uh the chat here uh, if I can the box is shaped there. like a tv when you like an old-fashioned yeah uh, crt when you um when you were looking for that and you showed a picture of it on the discord i like gave me this immediate idea i was like oh it'd be really cool to do a color Packing puzzle like that that looks like yes. the NTSC or the PAL bars yes. on the outside. And, that same it. Thing. and then I looked it up and it's like, oh, I didn't realize those test patterns were copywritten. Really? I was like, I don't know if you could actually <laughs> do that. You could probably make one that looks similar and everyone will still yeah. know what you're going right. for. Exactly. Yeah. Like, kind of like <laughs> knock off <Yeah>. test pattern. <laughs> as far as that, did you, did you consider having one made for you or, you know? It's not that complex of a puzzle. They're just blocks. So. Yeah. So the cool thing about the uh, the Discord channel is um, George S and uh, L82 both uh, ended up making a. Um, uh, sorry, I'm blanking. The um, Bertools uh, file for one. Uh, so the the video I think Josh uh, posted gave them enough of the information they could figure out at least the the packing side of it. So I think uh, George S is going to at least uh, make a, a a prototype from what he, he he can see from the information from the video. So um, we'll see what goes from there. It's uh, it's just it's truly bizarre that I just can't find that thing anywhere. And the crazy like as a thing. challenge <clears throat> when you posted that to try to find something on it. Yeah, yeah. I think I tracked the dude down in like Czechoslovakia or something like that on his LinkedIn. Really? Wow. Two guys by his name in where he lived, like where I found out where he lived at. Mm -hmm. I sent both a message on LinkedIn and nobody sent me anything back. They're probably, who is this crazy guy? Yeah, isn't it wild? I mean, there's yeah. no no contact. Uh, puzzle World, I think, was the uh, Puzzle Wood, maybe. I, I'm blanking on the Puzzle Wood. Yeah. Uh, sent them a message like, yeah, no copies here. Uh, and the last copy of the thing went on Marketplace. It was like the first time I started joining the uh, the Discord probably nine months ago, and I saw a copy, and it it went for forty bucks, and I was I was like, ah, I don't know, I'll find another copy at some point. <laughs> never find a copy since then. So, what you need to do is just say that you have that you're going to remanufacture them and start selling them, 
really quick, someone will contact you. <laughs> <laughs> actually, that was the reason I was uh, trying to reach out to the uh, the original designer. I was actually looking to to purchase the rights to be able to to reproduce it. And even to check down the rights, apparently the rights belong to a pre, uh, a former um, former employee of Pelican. And I reached out to them, and they didn't answer me on that. So hmm. it's just I I, sh I should have made a documentary on the <laughs> to find this little forty dollar puzzle. So the TV crazy. Case. <laughs> oh, look! I it was uh, the Cinemark arcade token, and I was like, I was like, yeah, I don't even want to yeah, involve that. Was a... I was like, I don't token. even want to like get stuck in a an illegal loophole. <laughs> well, that and like, is Cinemark a thing still though? I don't know. It's a good question. I, I would assume so. I think they are. I think I think there's a Cinemark around me somewhere. I think I saw okay. some news about like yeah, them might, wanting to reopen with the whole pandemic. It might, it might not be around much longer if uh, <laughs> yeah. this yeah. pandemic yeah. starves out the movie industry. Yeah. Yep. I so. feel like I should be able to make some progress on this stupid lock, and I am not. Very sad right now, guys. I got a couple prints I gotta go grab off the plate. I'll be right back. So Brandon dies here, you said it was a tool, so it is an SD? Yes. I, I don't know because I uh, haven't been able to successfully use the tool for anything. So, you know, maybe maybe the designer just accidentally dropped it in there or something, you know, and it's not actually part of the puzzle. Just try as I might, I feel like I'm just... Nasty. Yeah. <laughs> I thought... So if you make the TV case, you've got to add something to it so you can call it a uh, sequential discovery because that's the, the, the hottest fad right now. You know, everyone it is. wants a sequential discovery puzzle. I had someone someone tell me, they were like, oh, with, with Ansel, because I mean, technically it's sequential discovery. I call it se sequential discovery light. And he's like, I don't know if I'd call this sequential discovery. I'm like, well, what do you want me to call it? <laughs> Nick Baxter, by the way? Uh, I don't, really, it could have been him. I did have a discussion about it with him. So I'm going to head out, man. I got to put my kid to bed, but I'll be watching on YouTube. All right. Thanks for stopping by. See ya. Wait, yeah. wait, wait. What's the thing behind you? Oh, oh yeah. Um, it's a lamp. You were right. right. <laughs> it would have been so funny if he was like, it was a bomb. See you guys. <laughs> <laughs> See ya. Yeah. My kids are actually at uh, my in-law's house tonight. So everyone's like, what are you going to do? Your your kids are out of the house for like the first time in months. I'm like, well, I guess I'm solving a puzzle with strangers on the internet. So <laughs> what else is there to do? Oh, this you're thing. Basically, you're basically Twitch right now. Yeah. <laughs> this is driving me crazy. I really thought once I got this tool, I'm like, well, it's it's solved, but it's it's not. It's even more interesting. We're not even watching him solve it. We're just watching like <laughs> right, right. out of our slides. So it's like okay. If you're watching me, you would just see me doing the same like two or three steps over and over and over again. And oh, I'm pretty no sure change. I know what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just spinning it repeatedly over here. Hey, core question for you. Uh, somebody's asking what eggs, and I was trying to link them in oh. the Discord, but I can't find the unstable eggs link on Etsy. Are you? Are they just not available right now? What did I do with them? Oh, we lost them. I forgot I used Bolton Golf Printer. He left us. I'm gonna grab him. I'll be his 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 salesman. There you go. Unstable eggs series one. Oh. Oh, oh. <laughs> it's even got his his card in there. Nice. So they're eggs, and you just try to stand them up. I put it on here to show that they are indeed unstable. <laughs> and he's got two series. So I've done series one, um, and then series two has different colors, and the cards all mangled up in the box at this point, but. Series two. Um, 
Yeah, I don't like how Etsy, like, when things sell out, it doesn't show them anymore. Um, but they're good. So, I mean, I guess it says, you know, when you buy them, the challenge is not just to get them standing, but to try to work out how you got them standing, like what the inside must look like. Um, and he includes, a, you know, a printout of each one and what it, what's happening inside. And I was... I don't actually remember. I think I kind of figured out three of them, but the other three, it was just no. Like, I got them all standing, but I had no idea what was happening uh, inside. I haven't tried Series 2 yet. They're my Easter puzzles. Um, but they're fun. I like them. I mean, they're just interesting to, to have out. I like a nice, interesting-looking puzzle, like my chicken puzzles. It's still my favorite puzzle that I have. I used to tell everyone to go buy the chicken puzzle, but now they're sold out, so... Good luck, guys. Yeah, good luck, Brandon. I'm gonna have to drop now, but uh, good luck on your solve. Thank you! I'm, I'm about to... I'm about to eat my dinner that I never ate, but... Thank you. Hey, Gardner. How's it going? Ah, oh, the chicken! Yes! <laughs> <laughs> I love that guy. That was that's that was been like my first and only burr puzzle too, because I think you're muted there. Yeah, we can't hear you, Gardner. Yeah, there we go. There it is. Yeah, I had to show my bird cred. That's awesome. <laughs> you're legit. Yeah. I got like animal themed Kamiki puzzles too. It's so fun. Perfect. What I miss? The chicken. You missed the chicken. You missed this. <laughs> yeah, I got that. Because uh, I had seen that on the website and I brought it up like in the Discord a few times and I like never pulled the trigger on buying it. Um, and then I won the, the drawing for the cubic dissection puzzles back in May. And Eric actually, he, he messaged me because afterwards he's like, I already packed up the box, but then I saw you mentioned this chicken puzzle. So I threw that in there. I'm like, oh, dude, you're the best. <laughs> I was so stoked when I was opening the box. I'm like, oh, it's the chicken. Eric is the best. I've dealt with a million different puzzle uh, designers and manufacturers. And he's the, just far and above the rest in terms of his interest in his dedication to keeping his friends and customers happy and he really is a friend and a customer uh, uh pleaser because he's also uh, he got into this because he wanted he wanted puzzles and he found the only way he could get them was to make them himself so he's starting off on the side of being a puzzle solver too yeah i mean he he's messaged me a few times about ansel and offering advice or just general business advice uh he sent me some notes about laser cutters actually and kind of his recommendations and stuff so yeah he's a very savvy businessman partially because he thinks about things from the perspective of his customer all right y'all have heard of a live unboxing but how about a live boxing <laughs> <laughs> packing up this order there are some fights tonight um, actually yeah. <laughs> Are you, are you boxing up for me? Is that just is that your? <laughs> what's your what's hey what's your favorite color? Hey, let's do blue. Let's do blue. Yeah, if you. you stay on long enough, you might actually get it in the mail before I solve this thing. <laughs> what was this? Uh, what was this originally for? I, I sort of saw the link to it, and I it wasn't even sure so, what the what the what the what the subject was. The original plan was to do a solve off. So have a few of us try to solve um, lockout by what was it, Andrew oh, Coles. Yeah. Yeah, but, <laughs> but it turns out I was the only one uh, that had it. So I said, all right, enough's enough. I can't just sit here chit chatting with you guys anymore with this unsolved puzzle on my desk. So I said, I'm going to go solve it. And I'm making, uh, I started, a, no, I've, I made some quick so progress. The only person here who's actually solved it? No. Uh, Rammer was here. I think he solved it, but he's not here anymore. So, yes, you are the only person here that has actually well, solved currently it. Currently online, but not now. Okay. Yeah. So, I told them, I'm, I'm trying not to spoil it, but I've, uh, I found a tool and 
No matter what I try to do with it, I'm making no progress since then. Been there. <laughs> exactly where you're at. <laughs> I don't feel bad. That's how I felt when I was talking about it. Andrew told me. Andrew only gave me two clues. The first one was keep looking. <laughs> and the second one was you're doing the right thing. Keep going. Keep going. And he was right. It was like 20 minutes after he said keep going that I went there <laughs> where I was supposed to go. I was doing something that I thought was was too far, and I'm like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna end up in a bad spot. Yeah, yeah I went in with, I'll talk I to you guys later. Feeling, oh, bye. I went into this whole thing feeling like I was. Take care, man. Take care. Oh wait, you can't go. I just finished it. There we go. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah don't go. Sweet. Thanks, Cormods. Looking forward to it. <laughs> no worries, man. See you guys. See you around. See ya. Yeah, I wasn't sure how well I was going to do on it. This is the first time I've even touched a lock puzzle. Oh, yeah? I generally don't even, yeah, I generally don't even have metal puzzles at all. They're all wooden puzzles and mostly puzzle boxes. That's the only way I can keep myself out, out of trouble is to put some limits on my puzzle collection. <laughs> so I told myself early on, I know myself too well. I have to go and put boundaries up. And my boundary was if it's a wooden puzzle box, it belonged in my collection. If it wasn't a wooden puzzle box, it didn't. How long did that last? <laughs> um, until I joined the Discord. Yeah, <laughs> sounds about right. And then, what, and then I went and had to make an adjustment. I said, well, I'll keep the original rule, which is if it isn't a wooden puzzle box, it can't be in the collection. But now I have other puzzles I solved but they aren't officially in my collection, which means that eventually I'm either going to sell them or give them away or trade them. Mm. Fair enough. And that's how that's how I deal with it. <laughs> Word knows how long that's going to be real. That's going to be real. Hey, there's been people on this Discord who I think if I told them, you know, within a few months you're going to own uh, a paper pulp egg carton full of plastic easter eggs would be like, <laughs> yeah right they were like nah wouldn't metal all the way and then it's just like ah, nope gotta, gotta, gotta get these eggs apparently they're the hot thing now that's one of the first puzzles I bought I think those eggs they were uh, the gateway I think to get my daughter into puzzling Cause we... I have resisted the urge yeah <laughs> Oh man, I'm gonna have to go get a carton of them and shake them on camera. I, I actually used them on Easter. Um, I told my kids, you know, they got their Easter basket, and I put one in each of their baskets. I'm like, you can't eat any of the candy until you make this egg stand up. And they're like, are you serious? <laughs> yes. <laughs> they did it. It's a good thing no one. It's a good thing none of them had heard the story of the Columbus egg, or they might have tried that trick. <laughs> Where you smash the bottom of it just a little on a tail. Yeah, that would. <laughs> that would, that might work. Crack. Oh, there goes that. It's like it worked, but it'll never work again. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a rather expensive uh, pun, uh, joke to make. <laughs> I mean, not necessarily. I think the I think if you if you like gotta buy if you like gotta buy a replacement. I mean, I usually send out replacements if something goes wrong. But like, uh, if you gotta buy a replacement, it's only like five six bucks for a single one, something like that. When series three coming out? Have you have you done any designing for series oh, three? Well, let me tell you what I have done in series three. Uh, I made it a lot less of a pain in the ass for me to film. <laughs> um, I redesigned the, <laughs> and you you as the consumer will never notice this. But I redesigned the the egg itself to have a little bit of a thicker bottom, so it doesn't so it's not so fragile when it's coming off the build plate. Because believe me, I have lost a lot of eggs. Just ripping the bottom of them because they stuck too well to the build plate. Mm. Um, I like a nice thick bottom egg. And I also flattened out the bottom a little, so I don't have to do as much sanding to the bottom. Um, and then I've got some prototype designs, but they are have not they have not been printed because I haven't worked out like the, the math on them yet to see if they work. So it's been uh, it's been just kind of crazy, you know, what with the COVID and some stuff in my life, kind of hitting at the same time but uh but uh, i'm planning on getting there it'll 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 be eventually you know maybe some 
There's just there's still so much demand for the first two sets that I I go well this will be enough to to satisfy the the remaining demand and I I put them out and they all sell when they <laughs> yeah, no, that's a, more of these things. It is a good problem to have. That. Yeah, it's a, it's a good problem to have. Yeah, it's, that's what stands. <laughs> Lots and lots of stands. Oh, those are the stands. Yeah, we had this discussion on that. I thought I thought the shape was cool. I thought um, I was the one who suggested putting a a, tri a flat base around the edges for some of the bigger puzzles because I've got some good sized puzzles that that would be a little little bit unstable. <laughs> on those. Yeah, well, on these on these little guys, they're they're pretty light, so they don't. Yeah, for the small ones, they, they don't, don't seem fine. As I stare at my present face. Uh, Gardner, what's your uh, Discord name? Nile. Ah, You're Nile. Hey. hey. Nice to meet you. I'm Nile. As you can tell, I'm a little older than most of you. <laughs> <laughs> so if you, you get to this age, you can have an awesome puzzle collection. Yeah, this phase I end up selling most of my puzzles after I solve them. Mm -hmm. um, and I have to be careful now because the Discord people will yell at me, so I have to be careful. Um, We're selling it. <laughs> I haven't actually getting yelled at, but you know, there's always comments about people selling things too quickly um, after, oh, they're, so after they've been released. Flipping them around. Yeah, flipping. Yeah, I, a lot of people don't don't just come right out and say that the concern that they have is not that people are making a profit off of them. Right. The problem is, is that when, when there becomes a secondary market for them, it prices them out of the market. Mm -hmm. And so they can't, they sell too quickly. And then essentially it's just like ticket scalping. You end up being priced out of the market and you end up having to jump through more hoops to just get, you know, just to get involved, just to get your puzzle. Yeah, it I, seems I, like an enormous waste of time and effort. I was there when I was there when that incident happened that you're referring to, and I, I just think it was just a misunderstanding. <laughs> I don't think. Uh, I, I think it's a more of a generalized concern that people have. It's not just a single issue. I think. Yeah, I'm just saying because, that particular incident. I just think it was a misunderstanding. Oh yeah, that's it's definitely a concern. You know how it is with with text chat. You know, getting into context. It's like you talk to someone, and it's like, oh no, okay, that makes sense. I'm about to sell this lockout. Makes <laughs> sense. <laughs> well, I generally don't. Go ahead, sir. Oh, the lockout's coming from England, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. It came quickly. Like I think I got it within a week. Same here. That was good news. Yeah, puzzle uh, uh, mail has been improving in general. There are certain places that are still a big problem, and there are workarounds for some of them, like Japan. I get a lot of my puzzle boxes from Japan, of course. And um, the challenge we have there is Japan mail. They, they are completely dependent on uh, airline passenger flights. Uh, they ship all their, their mail from uh, Japan as EMS mail by and large, uh, and uh, they ship it via uh, standard uh, airline uh, flights. And since there's practically none of them because of lockdown, um, they were severely hampered. And that's why so many of the uh, shipments now are switching over to using um, carriers like UPS uh, or um, German, what's a German carrier, DHL. DHL. Um, because they have their own planes, so they can schedule them and know when they're going to arrive and take off. And they don't have this enormous backlog that uh, that the uh, Japan mail had. So I mean, things are slowly getting straightened out, but they just never had a plan for how to deal with this kind of a situation. They were completely unprepared. It's literally taken them you know, many, many months to sort of muddle their way through a solution.
I had a wanderer lock that was due Thursday, but it's now I'm in Vegas and it was in Vegas last night, but today it's on <laughs> like the, by California. And they were just like, well, it'll work its way back around to you, we guess. Oh, well, where? That's I'll all pick it up say. for you. <laughs> yeah, it was funny because it was like uh, it was like twelve twenty when I found out, and the post office closed at three. And I pulled up this place on my phone, and it was like two and a half hours away. And then for a moment in my head, I was like, because mm -hmm. it said on my tracker here, it said it's available for pickup, and I found out at eleven thirteen. And, this yeah, and you're like I'm, you're like yeah i could i could i could make that traveling at an average of 100 miles an hour. let's yeah. do it goldfield nevada that's where it's wow. at and Good it's still luck. there it didn't do anything today it's been there since 11. so yeah i thought i was going to do that puzzle this weekend but that's kind of that's kind of hot over there in that your neck of the woods isn't it mm -hmm. it's been uh, in the teens all week you know like 110 111 yeah i wonder what it is really? right now it's like been 108 for the average over here where you at california yeah uh yeah, you guys are getting the heat it's only 100 right now it says i'm inside i got the air on Who, who's the other person from california or me you know four months you can call me jerry if you i want, didn't but... know that jerry okay yeah, i was like... trying to learn people's names like the yeah. like the, the the terrible guy from subway <laughs> just like him he ruined yeah, Jared's down, forever I'm down in San Diego how do they use a flashlight here at least we have to ship something between each other Core. we know we're like a state apart it might actually find its way <laughs> my package yeah. was coming from Linux and that was like Kansas or something and he sent it Monday on priority and yeah and here we are wow my oh, joke is my wanderers wander. wandering wander. <laughs> yeah the wandering wanderer yeah, I enjoyed checking the uh, the progress when I was shipped out all those anzels because there was one that went it was supposed to go somewhere in New Jersey and it made it to New it made it to the right city and then it went back to North Carolina. I shouldn't say back to North Carolina because it had never gone to North Carolina yet. But it went to North Carolina, then back to New Jersey again. I'm like, I don't know what's going on, guy. Yeah, I hadn't really been shipping anything. I did the two Lotuses, and they both came from across seas. I believe the first one, Mr. Puzzle, ended up going to the Postal Service and then coming to me. But then when I had to replace it, that one came from J.P., and that came through DHL, which was super fast and came right to my door. Yeah. Yeah. So if I do any more overseas stuff, I'm probably going to ask if I can get the DHL option. JP, I will DHL. say, when Mr. Puzzles came in a box with some peanuts and the white box to the Lotus inside, right? The, the one I replaced it with from JP came wrapped in a bag, like a, here. A big burlap bag, right? Oh, wow. It was all wrapped up like <laughs> this. Then it had bubble wrap and tape wrapped around it in like a cocoon. Then it was in peanuts in a box. So I was like, well, this one, not that it had anything to do with my first one breaking, but I'm sure this one will be in great shape. So it's been fine since. I oh, bought my load and they came with the first step already uh, discovered. Done? <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Oh well, it, was I, uh, it wasn't from me, was it? I sold my notice. I spent, <laughs> I spent the first few like because I don't just sit there over a puzzle. Like I'll be working throughout the day, doing calls, stuff like that, and I'll just pick it up, mess with it, put it back down. It's a nice little you know fidget thing for me. And the first day I had the lotus, I, I, I mean, logic told me I couldn't get the bolt out that way, so I kept locking it with the washer and turning it thinking i could unscrew it somewhere that's i'm gonna pause you for a second niall have you uh have you solved this lotus yet <laughs> niall Not, nope, haven't even touched one. i don't know i don't uh, i don't, I don't want to spoil it for you yeah, what? i don't want to run it and what... don't worry about it don't worry about it i'll probably forget everything you say anyway <laughs> that's the first step you're talking about right getting that out 
Uh, yeah, so that took me a few hours to notice what I was doing wrong there. Well, speaking of accidental first steps, Ansel, oh, no. the way I picked it up, the first step, um, I, I don't know what happened in packaging, but I picked it up a certain way, and the first step happened automatically. Oh, no. <laughs> Sorry. No, no, no. It's, <laughs> I, I was... Uh, I was worried that that might not be the first step, so I was like, uh-oh. It can be a little finicky. It's funny. Yeah. yeah. You either solve it idea. quickly or you solve it in uh, a week or I two. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to say, as someone who builds uh, blind puzzles and designs them pretty frequently now because of the, the whole unstable eggs being so popular, uh, these... Are kicking my ass and i don't like it <laughs> yeah i don't want to talk let about me, it let me guess number is two is probably kicking your ass right now i, I want to throw number two one. in a trash can wow you, <laughs> that was funny it chroma keyed out the uh it chroma keyed out your puzzle uh really yeah, really? Let's yeah. See if, if, you, if you hold it at just the oh, right spot go. it like chroma keys yeah. it out it's funny yeah i i solved i solved one pretty quickly like 10 minutes or so but two yeah, so i figured out how one works kind of um yeah. i started messing with two cannot figure anything out started messing with three figured out like one thing and like kind of got it somewhere where now it's lost and i can't get it back into the diamond so i'm like well i don't know where it is now <laughs> so there goes uh, all, all attempts at logic on that one yeah so i like to try to just sit down and solve a puzzle like in one go Especially because most of the time I'm like filming it. So this was the other night. I hadn't solved any puzzles in like six weeks or something. So I'm like, it's time to do some puzzles. So I did uh, I did a couple. And I'm like, let's try try a lockout. And I did the first one. At this point, it's like, like one in the morning or something. I'm starting to get a little tired. I'm like, well, this one's easy. Let's do lockout two. And then it's like 2.30. I'm like, I have to go to bed. Why did I start this? <laughs> I was so tired. I'm like, it doesn't help you solve puzzles when you're really tired, too. That's when I mostly work. Do my puzzle work is between about 11 p.m. and 3 a.m. Ah. Unwind with it. Yeah. Yeah, I try yeah. to get the kids in bed by like nine, and then I'll then I'll start at it. But yeah, no kids to deal with here. Plus, it's about the time about 10 a.m. 10 p.m. Nobody start. Nobody's calling me anymore. I can't do it with kids awake because they grab pieces and run away. <laughs> Who wants some gems? Sing sparkle. Gems. Sparkle. <laughs> Just admiring Tito's bar back there. Yeah, wow. it's nice. <laughs> I, I strategically have it set up right by the puzzling station. Yes. Intentional. So he's got a far better collection of portable beverages than I have, that's for sure. <laughs> the goal, so I, I will say up until the lockdown, it was a lot easier to get booze in Pennsylvania. Since COVID, it's been nearly impossible. And I'm kind of, it's good because for my liver, especially, <laughs> I it, it kind of allowed me to pivot to puzzles. But the goal is to clear these shelves and start filling them up with puzzles. So well, have at it. Little by little. Yeah, <laughs> not, yeah, not quickly. <laughs> Yeah, slowly over Mod time. You can, uh, you can, uh, you can start. You can start sticking some puzzles in there now. Just put some trick bottles in there. I have looked yeah. at them. Yes. <laughs> yeah, puzzling time. Selling one right now, right? I think, maybe. I just want to say I love how the packaging turned out on these. Yeah, it looks very nice. How many of those are you planning on making? Um, I've got ideas for like two more. Um, but there's a lot of materials that I could definitely use if I came up with another idea. It might just be kind of an overtime thing, like, you know, maybe in a few months, you know, we'll come up with another idea and, you know, there'll be seven instead of six or whatever. But, uh, I'm not even sure if the two ideas I have will pan out. I've already had one idea where it's just like trying to fit a puzzle in this small of a space. Sometimes with 3D printing, it's just not possible to do what you want to do. It's just the scale's too, too, too small. Um, I actually had the, the failed parts of it over here recently. Um, I just kind of scrapped the idea just because it just wasn't possible to do at that scale. I mean, it was a cool idea, just 
just would not have worked out with how small it was. It would have been too fragile and too finicky. I, I came up with an idea kind of based on it, so actually it's probably probably shouldn't show it off even if I did have it because it's it would be kind of a spoiler of that new mechanism. <coughs> Yeah, Eric has uh, commented on trying to, to maintain certain form factors because so it's a sort of standardized sizes and also to maintain cost on the production. And, you know, some, as he said, for, for him, he was uh, following the same thing. There are certain sizes that limit the mechanisms you can, you can use. And then once you go up in size to a bigger so format, then uh, that increases your cost and complexity. And then it also has a follow-on consequence of limiting the number of uh, people who can buy it because now you have increased cost yeah i just I, I love these because they're so small and so affordable but they have like so much uh so much to give you know really like uh everybody who's ever played with them are like there's a surprising amount of puzzling in each of these like they're surprised they're always surprised because they just uh they're they're so unassuming at that size and you're just like okay how hard is this really gonna be and it's just like <laughs> i've got friends who are like an hour later or they're like i don't i don't understand i can't figure it out how could it how could it possibly how could there possibly be anything in this little package that could possibly be holding me back at this point i'm just like yeah <laughs> i got creative yeah i had a friend who um who was really close to figuring out pearl and he was like Oh, I'm so close and he went to bed kind of sort of frustrated that he couldn't get it because he was like I think I know what's happening in here but I, can't, I just can't make it happen right and the next morning he's like I solved it I was like oh good did you figure it out and he was like not exactly he goes I was showing it to a friend and uh, I accidentally did just the right movement and it came apart in my hands and I was like oh my gosh that's so funny <laughs> it's terrible but funny he was like no nah, I'm not even mad he was like he, he figured out once he saw it he was like oh he was like man he was like i was just doing like one step slightly backwards and i was like yeah i get what you mean you know it's easy to, to make an assumption about something when it's a blind puzzle and just have it backwards looking at these it reminds me of a question i've been wanting to ask a bunch of people so if everybody's familiar with the recent pelican puzzle particularly the osinoris that he's they've been cranking out Mm-hmm. How do you feel about them printing the damn name of the puzzle and the and the and the designer on the puzzle? Uh, I hate that. it. <laughs> that. I didn't even take it out of the bag yet. Mm. I don't yeah. like it. I, well, I don't hear anybody saying anything good about it yet. I yeah. okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna be the uh, I'm gonna be oh, the popular opinion. <laughs> I'm gonna be the Go devil's advocate, and I'm gonna say. Fine. I I do. I I like to un, un, unobtrusively make sure that my logo or my name or something that'll link you back to my store or my or, or just the website is somewhere on most of my puzzles. Not because I'm like trying to like to my own horn or anything, but because like I want people to know like if like someone tries to sell one or if someone. I think unobtrusively is the key. Yeah. Like the the, the Pelican say, ones, it looks like they just picked a default font and just kind of stuck yeah, it on there somewhere. Like. There's, there's so much they could have done to make that less obtrusive. And the font is a big one. And I think the color's awful too. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm saying this from, from like a background. Terrible. It's like all spotty. Yeah. It's it like doesn't fill uh, in the uh, grain. Yeah, yeah, and you know, you know what that's like? It's like they use the same process that some cheap twisty puzzles use. Where they uh, they print on the stickers instead of like sticking them on or making them stickerless, and I, I used to have a couple of them, and they just they look terrible. And like anywhere there's like a little flaw in the plastic, like it messes up the printing and it just looks terrible. Um, I've actually taken like two or three of them that had that, uh, sanded them smooth, and cut my own stickers out and just stickered them because they were such an eyesore. And like so, I totally get it coming from a background of. Of almost getting a uh, an art new media degree, uh, I have a lot of like I have an eye for the whole like font and colors, and yeah, they did they struck out on that font and that color, not not good. And the size, font, yeah. color, and size, all yep. three. Yeah, just the whole composition was a was kind of a a, a bad a bad mix. Yeah. I mean, if you yep. get over, I mean, what uh, crypto has what a hundred Ansonoris like. 
or Asinoris, like, do you seriously remember every single one and what they're called and when you get to that many? Yeah, I don't know. I don't. Uh, there, there's some people I know who have just amazing memories. You know, I've, like, I mean, I have hundreds of twisty puzzles. I remember just about every name. All right. <laughs> you're a madman. It really just depends on what you're, you know, what you're, what you're into and how how much you're into it. I mean, that that but, said, the Osinaris look very similar, whereas twisty puzzles are very distinct usually. <laughs> so yeah, so if they simply retooled. Smaller, more attractive font, a different, a different color that was not so, you know, garish. It would work. <laughs> yeah, I think so too. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, that's why. I, that's why I like. I usually do it like on the stand or somewhere unobtrusive. I love doing it on the stand. Actually, I don't think anyone here ever has bought a twisty puzzle from me. But if you do buy a twisty puzzle from me, they're actually on. I actually give you a stand with my logo embedded in it. So, just kind of a fun little way to remind you where you got it, I guess. I like that. Now, here's an example of what I do. If you can see that. Oh, oh it keeps disappearing. <laughs> it's being cranky. Well, too small. Oh, there it is. I, yeah, there you go. So basically what I do is um, I just take some uh, post-it note. Um, uh, I don't know what they call it. It's uh, like a correction tape. And you get it in big rolls. And it's not super expensive. And I just take a really fine marker. Just, One of these guys, pilot uh, marker, it's got a super fine tip. And uh, put my magnifiers on and write down, you know, name of it, who made it, where, who, who's, who make, who designed it, who made it, when I bought it. And I've been lately, I don't know why, I've been writing down how much I paid for it, just to keep it. <laughs> So I don't say something absurd to somebody. Oh, I paid a hundred dollars for that. It's a third of that or something. But that's that's what I've been doing. And the reason I use this material is one of the things that 3M is famous for with their Post-it notes is they came up with a, an adhesive that never hardens, never comes off the, never gets stuck on the on the, the thing you're putting it on, and it's uh, it's non-acidic, so it will never mark your your puzzles. Never at all. So as long as you keep it out of the sun, so it doesn't create a little sun you know, sunburn on there, um, then I always keep it facing down. And it should stay like this for 30 years with no problem. You'll be able to peel that label right off. It'll be like you never had it on there. Yeah. That for me is the most important thing. I don't want to change my puzzles. I don't want to make them look weird. So that's how I do it. It's a little labor intensive. I wish I could just print these off on some printer <laughs> and have the exact same label, label with you know five point or six point type. That would be nirvana for me. But so far, I have not found a solution that gives me that. The other thing would be to just put a two D barcode on. Mm-hmm. Yes, a QR code. Go, hmm? a little QR code, yeah. Yeah, and then what I could do is I could go and key that back in, put a gun on there, shoot it have it go to a database, do a lookup, provide me all the information I want to put in the database, and I could go and transfer that, put that online for people, put it on a web-based uh, uh, site with photos, have it all keep together. Now you know how crazy I am about this stuff. <laughs> so, Niall, how many puzzles do you think you have? Or do you know exactly? Well, let's just see. <laughs> since, since you're online, uh, let's see. Home kit. This should have been a terrible solve off, by the way. <laughs> You're winning. I'm, I'm, I don't feel like I am. <laughs> okay. Let's take a little walk. It's only a few feet. Oh, geez. This is the display case for living room puzzles. So, let's see. Tell me missing anything. Like, let me get rid of the background if I can. Let's see. Mm. Preferences. The fact that you're standing up and walking scares yep. me. With my laptop? <laughs> no, I mean the fact that you have to literally walk to a different area to show. Oh, no. That's, I walked this he's far. He's got to go to the west wing. 
<laughs> you know? I'm literally pivoting five feet, dude. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, so, yeah. Damn. So, there's one shelf. Here's some of my Kamiki puzzles. I don't know if you can see that. Tell me if I have to adjust anything. There's some more Kamiki puzzles. There's some more burp puzzles. You can, you'll recognize a bunch of those. Yeah. And there's here's some more bird puzzles and packing puzzles. I only recently oh, I recognize. Packing puzzles. I recognize a couple of those. More bird puzzles. And some more bird. There's two oh nine, two oh five over there. See that? Yeah. Nice. Okay. There's those. Did you solve two oh five? Oh, I don't have the time, man. <laughs> I, will get to, I will get to that when I retire. <laughs> There's some more Kumiki puzzles. I'm a big fan of Kumiki puzzles because I know uh, Tadaki Yamanaka from Yamanaka Kumiki Works. Good friend mm -hmm. of his. Uh, then let's see. It's a little dark in here. I turned the light on, but this is a wall shelf of just puzzle boxes. Ooh. Okay, those are just a few of my extras. Oh, here's a large uh, Kumiki puzzle. If you can see that one there. Oh yeah, the Conway Seven Cube, solved by the only person, only person in the world other than the maker of the cube, who could solve it. He did that in front of me at a puzzle party I went to in Livermore. Fucking <laughs> freaked me out. <laughs> Why wait? Wow, Hung. I see this is his name. I only met him that one time. I had no idea he was like the best puzzle solver in the world. Okay, guys, this is the puzzle box room. I'm literally going to stand to one side of it. <laughs> you can't, you can't photograph everything in it from, from one spot. It's not possible. So there's a case. Those are all the puzzle boxes made by guys from Karakuri Creation Group. That's it goes a... <laughs> from up there to down there. Jesus. <laughs> these are all puzzle boxes here in this case that were made by um uh, uh um, 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 okiyama he was a master craftsman and the bottom shelf there if you can see that those three boxes there those are all a hundred and what, 119 and two, 220, or 122 move boxes. World record for the, uh, uh, for the, uh, traditional Japanese puzzle boxes. He, he made the ones with the biggest number of moves and won an award for that. I've got two of them. And then I've got other boxes by other guys you all, you know better. Uh, and I've got, oh, yeah, this will be interesting. You like these. These are all Kagan Chasen boxes over here. This is great. <laughs> Both those two shelves. Um, these are all boxes down here. I've had, I gave a, a talk on the uh, late at night on the uh, Discord about boxes that were made by a craftsman that almost nobody knows about in Japan, but actually produced probably more puzzle boxes in three generations of puzzle box making than any other craftsman. And his name is Honma. So I gave a little talk about Honma, bo Honma boxes. All the boxes in those two shells were made by Honma, the Honma family. And um, rather unique, unique in that the Honma family not only makes pu made puzzle boxes and still makes them, by the way, today, but uh, also makes the Yosegi for them, the, the parquetry covering on top. Mm. There are only, I'm only aware of one, two, two craftsmen who have ever done, well, actually three. Oka's been doing it recently out of necessity. But generally two craftsmen who make the Yoseki and the puzzle box, uh, one of them is Honma, and the other one was a guy named Nina Mia. Speaking of which, these are all puzzle boxes made by Yoshiyuki Nina Mia, that shop. And this shelf, and you can see I've got more than I can fill in the shelves. So I have to do something about that. <laughs> so that's an idea of part of my collection.
part. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I've got drawers full of puzzle boxes in here. We got puzzle boxes down there. Those drawers. I've got drawers in the other room full of puzzle boxes. And as you probably have noticed, uh, my collection is a little different from most in that it is not only you know uh, modern uh, creators and Japanese collectors, but it's also historical puzzle boxes. So I have boxes that go back uh, into the late 1800s. Jeez. So I sort of, you know, it's not for me necessarily that the puzzle box has to be super complicated or, um, you know, made by, by some famous craftsman. Some of them are just, I collect because they're old and innovative and nobody else has it. And I just want to preserve it. So a lot of boxes I have, like, this one here, old box, doesn't look too spectacular really, but actually the way it opens is extremely unique. You've never seen one like it. I've never seen one like it. And uh, I'm pretty sure that most of the Japanese craftsmen today, alive today, probably never even seen one like it. It's never been documented. And that's what I do. I rescue boxes from people who have little appreciation for them. Nice. So, a little different from the rest, and I really appreciate all the different perspectives that all the other crafts, the, all the uh, different collectors have and solvers. Gives me a little more balance and gets me solving other kinds of puzzles, like my little bird friend here. <laughs> but, um, but on the other hand, you know, I've been a fan of puzzle boxes all my life since I was a little kid. So for me, a lot of it just goes back to sort of satisfying that desire to get a puzzle box that I've had since I was a little child. This is probably my nicest puzzle box I have. I got one like that. I, I love the, this one. I just love the history behind it, how it was yeah. a Disney thing. It was just like, what? Disney have puzzle boxes for a while? They Crazy. did in the 60s. Yep. And there were two versions. There were four, actually four four different versions of it. There are two in that size. That one was made in, for sale in the uh, in, in, uh, Disneyland in Anaheim. Yeah, this one was one's a Disney for, World. So. That was a Disney World one. That was the yeah. other one. And then they also had a smaller seven-move box that they sold in both locations. And here's an interesting thing. Does anybody know who made those boxes? Walt Disney, of course. I used, to. <laughs> I used to when I looked it up, but I don't yeah. remember now. <laughs> Doesn't say anywhere. Those were made by the Homa family, too. Wow. Oh. Yep. Nice. They were. Again, you won't hear anybody from the Terry Creek group, group, uh, creation group ever mention the Homa family. They'll never say it. Because nobody in uh, Hakone Yamoto, where the Homa family lives, nobody likes them. They hate them. Huh. They all, because they're snobs. <laughs> well, I found that out from a guy in Japan talking to him. I was wondering why is it nobody? These guys made so many puzzles, including puzzles that were made pre World War II, where almost nothing survives. You look at the, there were a lot of more puzzle box craftsmen back then, but they were dominated by the homeless. Largely because um, they're, the, the place where they make them, their shop, is really close to the main drag. And uh, they used to have guys who would come up through Hakone um, looking for things that they could sell internationally to the, the world market. And they literally would come up in, you know, like carts and they would buy them right off the street. And it was just a short walk over to the Homa family's uh, compound. It, it's just a, it's just like, you know, a hundred yards from the main drag. And they would, uh, and the Homa family would produce huge quantities of these things. So, if you've seen an older Japanese puzzle box, it's very likely it was made by the Homa family. And they made these ones from Disney when a local distributor said, hey, these guys from Disney said they want to buy a bunch of boxes and put their own labels on them. Could you do that? And they said, okay, we can do that. Because that's what you've got. Cherish it forever, core mods. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go grab some dinner, guys. Nice meeting y'all. Nice yeah, to meet you, you too. Thank you. See you, man.
This thing's driving me crazy. I've probably got to call it quits soon here too. What? What are you working on? Here? I'm still working on the the lockout. Oh, lockout! Yeah, yeah, that kicked my butt for a couple of days. I just feel like I'm. Uh, I don't know. I don't want to damage it. I feel like I could. Yeah, I felt the same way. I didn't want to scratch it. It was too too nice looking, too shiny. Yeah. Hey, you ever seen one of these puzzle boxes? Reader's Digest. Yeah, so I found this. It was like a promotional Reader's Digest. Uh, I bet you I know how it opens, so. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty typical. If you know how to open it, I won't give it away. Yeah, I do. It's super easy. I mean. Yeah, it's a one move box. Yeah, it's very fascinating though that it exists. That's what what, what caught my eye. I was like, Reader's Digest. I was like, what? <laughs> so those yeah. Those originally those originally were sold in black injection molded plastic back during the I want to say the early seventies. Yeah, mine actually has the cardboard box. I just don't know where it is because I have it packed away. Right. Yeah, like a lot of those promotional things, they you know they got something. From the map after you bought a bunch of them, slapped the label on, put it in a box, and sold it. Yeah, bizarre. If you if you open it, it definitely looks like it's made of like um like MDF or something. You know, something kind of cheap. <laughs> or is it actually made of a wood type substance? Mm, it's I just it, it it is wood, but you can tell that the outside layer is like a is like a layer. Oh, sort of, of like something. a a veneer, sort of like contact paper. You know, I'm not sure if it's contact paper, but it could be. It could easily be something fake, but I'm not entirely certain. All I know is that if you really look at the, if you really look at the, uh, if you really look at that, back that a bit. focus. So focus on, yeah. It just yeah, it looks, looks like, like uh, sawdust. H, looks like HDF, high density, uh, high density whatever board. Yeah, the particle board stuff. Particle board, yeah. Yeah, very, very, a very odd. It's a very odd thing in my collection. It's very unique. I'm always like, yeah. Wait. So how do you open it? Now I want to know. Oh, do you want to know? So it's just a one-step puzzle box. It's, it's literally like the simplest puzzle box. I mean, I have display cases that open like it. <laughs> Little display cases that open like it. You literally just have to find the right grip, and it comes apart. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you just grip it like, like that. Go like that. Yeah, but I mean, if you grip it any other way, it's not going to open. But like I said, I have like display cases that are like plastic cubes that. That open that exact same way, um, which is pretty funny. <laughs> I wasn't expecting like a big puzzle out of it. I was just like, when I saw it, I was like, I was like, what? Promotional puzzle box? And then I got that Disney one afterwards, and I was like, it's actually kind of interesting. How many promotional puzzle boxes are out there? Oh yeah, it used to be a big deal during the fifties and sixties. There were a lot of uh, trick boxes that were uh, that were sold for as promotional items. <laughs> Speaking of tricks, uh, here's a dirty trick. Uh -oh. Here's a nice oval office that I found. Uh, someone didn't know what they had for super cheap. And then here's an oval puzzle box by bits and pieces, which is a dirty trick because they sure tried to make it look like an oval office. But it's really <laughs> not. No, it's not. It's really cheesy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I ended up finding this at a good way. <laughs> that. that was that was a disappointment. Yeah. Well, I actually, so what's funny is that it's only one step, really. Yeah. Um, but what I actually ended up doing is I actually modified my top and says two step because it clearly had the parts to make it a two step yep. block, but they didn't do it. And so I did. I was like, screw it. I'm just going to modify it. It's some cheap ass box anyway, right? Right. <laughs> it's a throwaway. Yeah, actually, uh, get it open so I can show you this weird, terrible. Locking mechanism, which, by the way, don't even consider it a spoiler. It's so awful. <laughs> I've already opened it, and I'm not yeah. interested. I'm so, not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, after this talk. Yeah. So I just like put a spacer there. Yep. Of wood, and this one still turns, and this one's offset enough that you have to turn the lid and the, the little thing at the same time a different amount. So. You know, at least it's like not, at least it doesn't like fall open by accident anymore. Hmm. Interesting. It's thing. just a sad testament to how put this in pieces, uh, puzzle, what they call it, puzzle something in the international, whatever they call the group that the company that they set it out to construct it to. But they'll go and they'll go through the most of the motions to make it the way it's supposed to be, and then they'll kind of screw it up 
and then they'll just sell it anyway. <laughs> yeah. Occasionally I'll buy some of their stuff off of clearance from bits and pieces just for the fun of it, just to have it in my collection. It can be pretty cheap. You can find the right coupons and stuff. And once I bought this kind of like lock puzzle that's like mm -hmm. made of bamboo and acrylic, and it was kind of cool. Um, but the first one I got, they they sent it to me, and it's um it's mismade. Because I just I couldn't figure it out. I couldn't figure it out. And finally, I, I I look up the solution. I go, that's exactly what I did. And I look at it, and like one of these little like discs that's in it, made of acrylic, is like the wrong disc. They put in like two of the same disc instead of like one of each. And I like complained to them, and they sent me a new one, of course. But nice. it's just crazy how little quality control they have. <laughs> By the way, Speaking you can never find an Oval Office. Really cool puzzle box. I really do enjoy it. Speaking of quality control and uh, puzzles made by uh, different pieces. So as you probably know, they licensed copies of um, Kamei's Pentagon box. Hmm. So that is that is one that I looked at a long time ago when I first got into puzzling. And I wish I had picked one up. Uh, well, I think you're first... about to... I, I think you're yeah. about to tell me that I, I shouldn't have pick it up so go ahead <laughs> no actually it's a little bit more complicated than that but if you're ever thinking of getting one this will be an important lesson so yeah. these this here and this one here were made by by uh, uh bits, through bits and pieces or made available to bits and pieces through their whatever company that they get them done in taiwan i believe in case <laughs> the first ones they did work they look pretty good they actually, for the va for the price they sold for, they were an excellent value, and they actually work well. I won't solve it for you, but they, uh, take my word for it, it works. It's actually a good box, and I keep these around for when I want to show people how uh, it works, and I don't want to hand them a $500 Kamei box to solve it. <laughs> yep. take, that take that risk. So I've got, I've got two of these. I don't know when I got them, but I've had them for a long time. So then um, bits and pieces went and um, reissued them. I was surprised. But uh, about 10 years ago, they put up some more up for sale. And I thought, oh, great. I'm going to buy a couple for, you know, for friends and whatever. And then I got them, and holy crap, they were not the same. Do you see that? Yeah. yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. So not only are they... I mean, ridiculously poorly made. I mean, like absurdly, like insultingly made. If I were Kamei, I'd be pissed to see that they were selling these things. But they don't even they don't even reliably work. They you literally can't make them work. They're so poorly crafted. I mean, they should never have even sold them. These would normally be like rejected. Throw them in the scrap in the scrap heap. That's that was from the the, the last batch they made and. I returned some, and I should have returned them all. So I did. I kept no. the two. These are literally the two best that came. So that's the bits and pieces. One of the only one of the only good puzzles I gotten from bits and pieces. <laughs> It'll be that. Oh, Wait. Really took off. So do you have the hamburger puzzle that I failed to get at auction? <laughs> I really wanted that ham for that cheeseburger. Was that a, that was an original, a genuine Kamei bot, uh, hamburger? It was a, it was a, I think, I think it was a bits and pieces remake. Oh. Well, and it still I got. I know what my general prejudice about bits and pieces remake. So. I think it still got up to you like two fifty or so. Is when I was like, all right, this is absurd. <laughs> I think back, there was one other that that impressed me. Uh, I do have a. Marcel Gillen, uh, Hail to the King, uh, from Bits and Pieces, the aluminum version. Okay. Uh, it's the, aluminum puzzles, it's, it's the, it's the one that looks like this, but bigger. <laughs> right. It's the Hanayama King, but bigger. Which, the Hanayama ones are, are much better quality, don't get me wrong. Actually, I have a question for you, since you're such a, such a, such a puzzle box expert. I found this at a Goodwill for 69 cents. It looks like okay. real wood. It does not look like like a, 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 a fake one like the bits and pieces do. And it's very small. Yuka. Yuki Yuka. Really? Yes. I'm surprised that you identified that so quickly because it <laughs> so little <laughs> to go off of. 
Do you know what I it's will, called? I will surprise you. Do you know what it's called at all or anything? But it it's all what looks like what two sun? Looks like a two sun, how many move? Probably what four move? Uh yeah, I think it's four move. Found that. What is that on the list? I don't know oh that's that. interesting. Hold that back a little bit. Am I am I holding it in the right orientation? I'm not sure. A little farther away. A little further away, it's not focusing. It's too close. Okay, and then now I have to is there a way for me to actually select one of the miniatures to get it to go full screen? Yeah, I think if you hit pin, pin video. Yeah. There. Now, uh, now that I can see my own video, let me actually try to get there you it go. focused. Um, that okay. is interesting. I'm going to take back what I said before. Um, Come on, focus. Okay, you know what? I'm going to get my uh, I'm going to get my focus tool up here. In just a sec. I'm going to take care of it. Because that those are called honkos, by the way. That's the yeah. real. And that honko does not look like it's made by Oka. Oh, there is Logitech. 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 Why is this not open? Okay. Uh, don't worry. I'll focus the camera. Uh, at okay. Distance in just a so that's the bottom of the box. That is the lid. I would say. The lid. So yeah. um, let me take a quick look at how it's constructed. Show me the top of the open box. Sure. The, in, the inside of the open box. No, no, don't auto focus. No, 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 no too far. <laughs> oh, that is really hard. I might just be better to send you a photo of it. Oh, no, wait, I can get it. That's pretty clear. Okay. So, show me the rest of the box. Sure. Oh, uh, there she is. Okay. So that looks like a standard four move box. Uh, the Honko is what's throwing me off. Other than that, I would definitely say that that was an Oka box, but that is not, Oka usually doesn't stamp the inside of his boxes like that. Yeah, so that was the lid. So it might, yeah. But the Yosegi that's on it, that sort of crisscrossed uh, Ichimatsu style, style pattern that looks like a really cheesy old puzzle box, that looks very much like a uh, uh, a Hiroyuki Yoka box, but I can't identify the Honko and I don't speak, I don't read uh, that the, what, Katakana. Yeah. So I, can't read, I can't read what it's saying. However, if you have a smartphone and it has Google Translate on it, yeah, I've done you, might, you might mm -hmm. have a chance of being able to translate that. Yeah, I might. So, no guarantees. <laughs> yeah, who knows? I have to try that real quick. Yeah. I think I had that on here. At some point, because I was messing around with it. Anyway, I can tell oh. you that that's not a that's that's not a puzzle box made by an Okiyama or a Minamiya or a Honma. That's not how they. Uh, that's not what they make. Uh, let's see. In fact, I think Hon uh, I think. Uh, Oka is making a box very similar to that, or has been making them very recently. Camera. There There's not too many puzzle box makers who make square bo uh, cubic boxes like that. Come on. No. No, you know what? I need to get a, on a plain background and then some more light. It's getting dark in here. Okay. More light. And maybe on a plain background. This will actually pick it up. A couple guys on the Discord that claim that said that they could uh, read Japanese. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm guessing. Yeah. I select nice, Japanese. Nice resource. That'll help. So, just a general question: What about puzzle boxes? Kind of grabbed you. Uh. Okay. Uh. Let's see. This is uh, taking it right back to the origin. This is the origin story for me. Um, <laughs> what got me about puzzle boxes was when I was a kid, probably six years old, maybe. Um, a neighbor of mine invited me, me into his house because I had um, expressed some interest in, we used to have like firecracker fights in our neighborhood. So the kids would be on either side of the street and they would light and throw firecrackers with each other. So I had a very early um, fascination with firecrackers and fireworks. 
so uh, he found out about that one that I was talking to. He, uh, and um, he said, do you want to see some firecrackers? And I said, sure. So he took me into his house, into his bedroom, and on his desk, he had this large wooden puzzle box, uh, six cent size, of which is of the size here. Okay. <laughs> and then he went to open it. And he had you know, scissors are going, opening the sides on it, sliding it open and, and going. And I was, as he continued to open it, I was like, my eyes were as big as the moon. I said, holy crap, what the hell is he doing? <laughs> I'd never seen anything like it. And he went and he just said, kept, seemed to keep going on forever, you know, move, making all the moves and sliding in. By the time he opened the box up, I was already in love with the box. I was like, ah, I can't believe that you have that box. I have to have one of those boxes. And I was very impressed with him a young kid. And then he opens it up and then it's full of firecrackers. I mean, it's just like stacked to the top of the and that was my second love was firecrackers and fireworks. <laughs> so I just said, okay, man, it's like, I, you own me. I just, I'm totally down with whatever the hell this is. Um, I have to have the firecrackers and I have to have the um, puzzle box. So it turned out it was a hell of a lot easier getting the firecrackers than it was the puzzle box. Okay, so he, I can yeah. tell you what Google says. It's yeah. a, but I'm not sure if this is 100% correct. I don't think it recognized the characters all 100% correctly, but it looks pretty close. And it yeah. said, Okakaru Kuto. There you go. So. Yoki Yoka. Yep. Of Okacraft. By the way, interesting fact, since you guys uh, have all heard of the character recreation group, Yoki Yoka used to be a member of the character recreation group for many, mm. many years. Turned out a lot of books for the character recreation book. A lot of boxes, rather. And then one day, uh, he decided he saw his stuff stopped showing up. And a few years after that, he disappeared from the site. Hmm. They, like, he was a persona non grata on this website. And they took his listings off, and they have no history of his stuff. Hmm. He went into business for himself. He set up his own shop and decided that he was just going to make uh, traditional Japanese puzzle boxes and that there was a market there to be built. And he was jumping in right after um, Okiyama passed away and the output from one of the other high quality traditional Japanese puzzle box makers uh, who we used to sell to the company called Izumiya. His output stopped, started to really sharply drop off. Uh, I think because the old man sort of retired and his son took over. And they started getting fewer and fewer boxes from him. And then I think what happened was folks saw an opportunity to, to like essentially move into that market and take a big chunk of it. And uh, he is now one of the two uh, craftsmen who are making the majority of the traditional Japanese puzzle boxes, which are called the um, Okawa style puzzle boxes after the originator of the design. Um, anyway, um, so it's him and now, um, uh, 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 who's the other? Uh, I just mentioned it too. Uh, uh, Yamanaka, the Yamanaka family, Kodaki Yamanaka. He's almost completely taken over to uh, the uh, the market for traditional Japanese puzzle boxes. For good reason. He makes excellent boxes. They're some of the best boxes currently made, hands down. Hmm. Anyway, so that's a that's an Oka box. If you need to know anything more about it, I can, you know, I can answer your questions. Cool. Super cool. Yeah, I actually puzzle boxes are, are kind of a rare find for me. Is the funny mm -hmm. thing, but I have found some uh, just how could willing, and that was one of them. Um, and uh, I found that one of these two. I think called like a Luigi puzzle box or something like that. We just called those. We called them book boxes. Yeah. Um, I guess that's just what uh, somebody told me once that uh, it's in really bad shape. I feel like had to do something about about it. It's really broken up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Take fine. Another little, take another little walk. I've got some some definite weird stuff in my collection. Here's I want. A, I want you to see a few more of them up there. Yeah. There you go. 
I once found a uh, funniest thing I've ever found out thrifting was a programmer's nightmare bird. You familiar with that? Programmer's nightmare bird? Bird. Bird. B U R R. Bird puzzle. Burr. No. Yeah. I'm not so familiar with that. It's a. It's a. It's a. Um. It's a burr that apparently they call it programmer's nightmare because uh, if you try to use burr tools on it, it says it can't be done. But actually, yeah. it has a rotation move in it that's really tricky, right. and yeah. so the program just can't just can't figure it out. But the guy who designed it figured out how it could be done and he made it. And it's like a forty dollar puzzle, and I found it for sixty nine cents at a good one. <laughs> I'm just like, good deal. Who, who gives this stuff away? You know, people who don't know what they have. There's so. lots of those out there. You'll find them on eBay all the time. Yeah, this is. Yeah, I've got some weird puzzle boxes. This is another. Another kind of traditional one that oh, yeah. I just found. Um, that was that one's a home box. Yep. It was probably made in the um, late 1950s or early 60s. It sort of straddles that period. Yeah, I've got some more that's, bits and pieces in here too. I've got that's a seven move. That's probably a seven move box. Oh yeah, that's a bits and pieces. That's a copy of the uh, uh, beat up original Kame box. I've got a, a ribbon box too from bits and pieces. Yeah, I do too. I, know, I don't find of, them particularly challenging. Yeah, no, kind of a disappointing one on the ribbon box. I was like, what? Really? You know? It's like, I, I've made better puzzle boxes than that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, and good for you. I hope you keep doing that. <laughs> yeah, there's another another one I've laying around. Oh, yeah. You know, that That's an interesting box. That's an older box. Uh, that was made pre-World War II. And oh, wow. you see the See the Scotty dogs on them? Yep, I do. That's all you need to know to know who made them. Oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah that's made by the Honma family. They showed me the original Yosegi that they created those boxes with when I went to visit them. So when you see Scotty dogs on there, they're, here's the thing to remember. They're, they're made in Japan. It was made by the Honma family. And why Scotty dogs? Because uh, at... Uh, Turn of the century, when the Japanese were trying to look for stuff to make to satisfy the foreign market, they traveled around the world. They sent Japanese emissaries around the world uh, to look at uh, crafts made by different people in different countries. When they went to Britain, they started seeing these wooden boxes that were made by a Tunbridge a company. It's actually named in town in, uh, in Britain, made in Tunbridge, and um, they were. You know, they were uh, marketry box, parquetry boxes, like uh, Japanese boxes. So uh, they brought them back to Japan and showed them to craftsmen in the Hakone area where there were wood craftsmen who had previously made the Japanese temples. And now we're kind of out of work because, you know, once you make a Japanese puzzle, a Japanese temple, wood temple, it's good for about 100 years before you need a guy to come back and work on it again. So they kind of put themselves out of business, but they had to look for new stuff to do. And it was right around that time that the, 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 uh, they came up with a simplified mechanism from tonsus that they decided to turn into a little box. And uh, and uh, that became the, the the beginning of the modern puzzle, Japanese puzzle box. Well, um, what happened was they went looking for designs to put on these boxes to make them a little more interesting. Somebody already pulled back, brought back a box from Britain. It had these Scotty dogs on. They were very popular right around the 1900s, 1910s. And they said, well, can you go and do that? And the craftsman said, sure, of course we can do that. And uh, they, modified a, um, they modified a sewing machine, took out the needle, put in a small blade, basically a, 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 turned it into essentially a jigsaw. They started cutting out pieces of wood to put together like a jigsaw puzzle. And that, and then they figured out a way to plane that. That came about in about 1917, or 1907, sorry. Uh, they figured out a way to plane it using a Japanese, a specially made Japanese plane into thin sheets, and then they could glue that on the surface of the box. That is how uh, Yosegi and um, uh, Zogon, which is what the pictorial uh, versions of it, are. That's how they started making them. And they copied the motifs that they saw when they went around the world. So when they went to Britain, they saw boxes that had Scotty dogs on them. 
that's how the Scotty dogs came about. They type copied them. And if you look at the really early Japanese puzzle boxes, those Scotty dogs looked like they were made by people who had never seen a Scotty dog <laughs> in their entire fucking life. And they got better. They finally got better when they actually started seeing pictures of the actual dog. <laughs> that took years later. And then you can see the evolution of the puzzle box of the, of the images over time. Wow. That's funny. So, and I get and I got the the uh, book boxes. Those were those were copied from the Italians. They were so they were tour, they were um, uh, tourist uh, items sold in. I don't know, I'm to, I don't think it was Florence. I forget. But they the boxes actually the old the older boxes say on them. There was like uh, the made in you know whatever part of Italy. So that's where they come from. So basically, Japanese had to copy a lot of stuff early on and that was the or origin of the, the decoration but the actual function of the Japan, the puzzle box itself that's purely Japanese. Hmm. oh also one last thing kamiki puzzles you know i collect got a collection of those um originally just kamiki puzzles didn't come from japan either they were actually made in germany and if you look at old catalogs from like the johnson smith novelty company or uh a, a, B. Shackman um, from right around the turn of the century. The first ones they started carrying in there were made in Germany. They're beautiful examples, but I got one of them in my case over here. Uh, they're beautifully made, and uh, they cost about fifty cents a piece at the time, which was a lot of money at that you know that bit, at that age, at that year. Um, and then when they the Japanese started getting some and started uh, making their own versions of it, the prices dropped by like factor of five so very quickly uh the germans lost the market uh, because they were being outpriced on the spot on the puzzle and by the way if you look at the, what's been going on recently with uh kamiki puzzles same thing's been happening with other asian ma manufacturers making their own uh kamiki puzzles now and putting yamanaka uh some really difficult straights and trying to sell their own puzzles so Recapitulation of the same process keep going on through time. But the, yeah, the, the original Kamiki puzzles were essentially, the idea came from Europe. And when Japan saw them, they started making their own versions cheaper. And then they evolved over time to create their own different uh, styles. Yeah, these, these are some other weird puzzle boxes, which probably no one knows anything about, possibly. Um, they're just some, they look mass produced, and they're just some really easy trick mechanism. And I, I think I, I know the one on the, uh, on the left, that one there. Yeah. I, I'd be I tempted to, there, eh, maybe not. I'd be tempted to say that they're, uh, like bits and pieces because they're one step, but they definitely don't look like a bits and pieces box that I've seen ever. They also seem a little too nice. Like they're they're really nicely put together, and I'm just like, that's really quality for a bits and pieces wood puzzle. I don't know if that's. So you didn't. So those weren't purchased through an original purchase. They're second. Nah, second these off. were second hand. Yeah. And they're just, you know, look away if you don't want it spoiled to anybody. But <laughs> just, yeah, it's one of those like magnetic locks. Yeah. Um, same that thing with this one. But, yeah. That, it tricks you that, into thinking that this same is the box. Way. It's not. Yeah, that's a Japanese box. The character recreation group is currently selling the one on the right. Yeah. And the one on the left, that was uh, from Bits and Pieces. And that is from a designer. I'm trying to remember who made that design. But uh, uh, Eric just uh, turned out a couple of revisions ago, a couple of uh, sales ago, turned out a copy of that in a much better version i'm terrible with names you guys will learn that about me i'm hard i have trouble recalling proper nouns but um i've got a good memory for things um so um if i just i'll i'll go and get one of those boxes just to show you real quick What are you pouring, Tito? 
Uh, Blanton's. You guys drink so much more than I probably do. <laughs> <laughs> I just downgraded from Rock Hill Farms to Blanton's. So. And, uh, I've got my I've got my dad's root beer over here. All right. <laughs> that's, good. that's good stuff. I can't solve this. Wisconsin lock. makes root beer that's really good. I can't remember its name. It's got a crow on the front. Mm. Have alcohol in it? No. <laughs> <laughs> that, my friend, is why they make vodka. All right. Yeah, vodka is the uh, universal mixer. Here's another version of your box. Oh, yeah. There you go. That's definitely one of them. Right. So, you can see this one's. A little more tricky than yours is a tumor box. But uh, basically it works the same way. There's a magnet in there. But you remember this one from Eric? Perhaps somebody, some of you bought this. Hmm. Interesting. It's a one move box too. I won't spoil it for you if you haven't seen it. <laughs> basically these are all the same box. And they're made by a famous puzzle maker whose name eludes me at this moment. But um, but they're they're essentially the same puzzle. All right, here's some other bits and pieces ones that actually are nice. Other metal puzzles did pretty well, except for this one. This one is like defective before you even get it. Uh, <laughs> mine fell apart in Not shipping. An endorsement. <laughs> <laughs> mine fell apart in shipping. Um, yeah. By the way, I love the lighthouse. Very very fun. Um, the nut and bolts okay too, but I, I really love the lighthouse. Definitely my favorite. This that one, one also like rocky, rocky Chiaro design, I believe. Yeah, this one also um, kind of a pain in the ass, and the solution doesn't quite work because there's some parts that aren't held together well enough um, right. until you put in some thread lock, uh, which is what I had to do with this too. And that's not even a spoiler. It's not like it's supposed to unthread. It's like that's just how they built it, and they didn't thread it on enough. To just stop it from coming apart and it just comes apart and also there's like some pieces in here that aren't the right size and luckily it was really easy to, to source replacement pieces though and i just so so what i did actually funny story uh is i complained to bits and pieces they sent me a new one um it still had this it, it didn't fall apart in shipping this time but it had the same flaw so i just went out and bought some uh some 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 stock some pin stock and and cut new ones for both of them, fix them both up so that they actually work as intended. Because if you just do it with the pins that they had in there, it's one step. Again, for some stupid reason. Um, but if you put them in, then it becomes like two, three steps. Um, put it in the right size. And so I did, and then I just took the other one and sold it on eBay for what I paid for it, practically, and said, hey, this one's been upgraded. It works as intended. It's been upgraded. It now works. Yeah, and somebody who uh, somebody who who actually knew about the puzzle contacted me on eBay and was like, "Oh, what'd you do? Did you fix the fix the the design flaw?" And I was like, "Yeah, I just cut more pieces for it." And he was like, "Oh, damn!" He was like, "I'd love to have that." And I was like, "Well, yeah, cool. You can you can have it. <laughs> it's yours. It's yours. <laughs> That's why it's up there." I have yet to hear a positive endorsement of bits and pieces. I, I mean, like I said, some of their metal puzzles turn out really nice. I mean, this. This is a bits and pieces, and it, it, it yeah, the older perfectly. ones were, were pretty good. It's just they don't have enough quality control and supervision modern day bits and pieces. Very hit and miss. Okay. Yeah, okay. very much. Uh, I, have, I do have I do have one endorse, uh, endorsement of bits and pieces. When they resell other puzzles by like uh, Pelican, they're a good price. They do the job, and they're original Pelican, so there's nothing wrong with them. Yeah. This is the first puzzle <laughs> box I ever made uh, out of a reclaimed old pen, pen box. It's really peed up now. <laughs> but uh, it's just a... What? You're not Kelly Snake? <laughs> hmm? Say again? Not Kelly Snake and you re and you turned, a you turned something that was not originally a puzzle box into a puzzle box. <laughs> yeah, although I think it's a little bit frozen up. There we go. Yeah, keep okay. my puzzle pen in there. <laughs> Your puzzle pen. Yes, it's a puzzle pen. Yeah, puzzle it's, a, <laughs> it's a sliding puzzle on a pen. You can't just casually throw out that you that's where you keep your puzzle pen. 
<laughs> oh dear. Mm, that is that is not what I meant. Yeah. I'm giving up on this lockout. I, it has defeated me. Uh, oh, you'll come back to it and you'll eventually. <laughs> That's the whole point. I forgot of I had that too. Hey, you, need to, you can always ask me for the two clues that I got from Mandrew that weren't really clues, but help me. I forgot I had this puzzle box, yeah, too. Told you. Or, yeah. ordered this thing expecting it to be like twice as big as it was, and it comes and I'm like, that's it? <laughs> <laughs> it's so tiny. You can keep your snuff in it. I know, pretty much. All you know what I keep in it uh, are my um, tips for my... Um, God, what do you call that? My drawing tablets. They're so tiny what? they get lost. You know, for, oh, for, like, for a digital like bio, drawing pen. Bios chips or something? No, no, no. Digital, digital, uh, the tips for a drawing oh, tablet. Oh, tips. Pen. The 10 tips. Got it. Tips. Yeah. yeah. I think we keep them losing them. Yeah. I mean, the, I mean, the base for the pen store is like 10, but I have like 50 of them. So they just give you tons of them. I'm just like, okay. Gotta keep them somewhere, I guess. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm sure I have more puzzle boxes somewhere in my collection, but I mean, oh, where? Who knows? They're they're kind of packed away safely, so they don't get screwed up, I guess. Oh, you know what though? I bet you I have a puzzle box. I need. Oh, I want that. Good one. Ah, yeah, I want it. Jealous. I love it. I'm sure he'll make one. I don't know. I haven't fully solved it yet. I just got this one. CD release. It's gonna be. More where's my hammer? I got my I got my free me eight I haven't tried yet. And I haven't tried blinded two yet either. Oh that one looks fun. I just got blinded yeah. this week. I, I, I solved it this week and uh, I have mixed feelings about it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I have mixed feelings about most of the boxes that are described as sequential to post discovery and you probably know that already. <laughs> well that was my I had a question for you, Niall. It's it's yeah. These boxes lately, I mean, 450, 300, you know, the amount of puzzling per price seems to be, I don't think it's a good deal as far as puzzling. Like, I've had yeah. a lot more enjoyment, a lot more time with like $30 packing puzzles than these like $400 boxes. Fair enough. And, um, what is your opinion on like the, the modern puzzle box? Non Japanese. Like, I, I don't have any experience with Japanese. But, like, modern American puzzle boxes, is it getting out of hand? The short answer is sort of is. Um, <laughs> well, historical perspective helps here. Okay. Uh, when I first started getting into puzzle boxes, and again, we're talking about like more than 20 years ago. Uh, Nobody spent more than two hundred dollars on a puzzle oh. box. Uh, so those puzzle boxes now, if they get on the market, a lot of the the, the ones that were worth two hundred dollars are now three thousand dollars. Right. So a huge amount of inflation has had has had happened to puzzle boxes because greater amount of interest in them, greater exposure of them, um, and the fact that it's trickier to make a Japanese puzzle. I was say Japanese trickier to make a, co a complicated puzzle box than there's a lot of other puzzles. So it's a cost, the cost of entry into the market is higher, just difficult, more difficult for somebody to get started, come up with designs and get well known. And by that time, you know, the time of, of design time that you put in, acquisition costs of the tools, the wood that you need, because it's uh, with puzzle boxes, the dimensions, the, the, the uh, the dimensions have to be so precise to keep them from binding on any box that has any complexity to it whatsoever that you have to spend a lot of time both choosing your wood, making sure the grain's right, um, drying it and aging it. You have to spend an, uh, a year per inch of thickness of the wood. So that push out, pushes out your design schedule a long time before you can actually go to production. Um, you have to buy the wood, you know, and then think about how you're going to use it a year from now. Um, and then just the whole fact that they've become pretty thin collectibles for a lot of people. Um, it pushes the price up. It makes them, they've become more than just puzzles. They become collectibles. Mm -hmm. And anytime something becomes valuable because it's cool to have, 
it's going to push the price up because a lot of people who have money and less more appreciation for how things look and who can say they have it than uh, simply having it as a puzzle, uh, it's going to make it so that people with money and less interest in just the puzzle aspects are going to start buying them up. And you see that. You know, the Halbrick auction they just had? Yeah. That all, all those puzzles, they, he's had, I don't know, what, 10 different auctions now? He's been, that auction was just puzzles coming from a single collector who was British who moved to um, Monaco with his, you know, over a hundred million pounds in his you know, family wealth. He could buy anything he wanted. Well, what did he buy? Well, he bought fine wines and he bought puzzles. Not just puzzle boxes, but his puzzle box, the puzzle boxes portion of his collection were already outrageous. And he only bought, you know, like the really super nice stuff. So when you're competing against puzzle box uh, collectors who have like infinite sums of money, prices are going to go up. Particularly if you're going and competing against puzzle boxes that are made in quantities of, you know, five, ten, twenty, just prices you out of the market. And that's happened to me, and I've been doing this for a long time. Hey, speaking of $30 packing puzzles, just saying, coming soon. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sold. I'm sold. I'm going to learn it now. Put it on Etsy. I got put it. it. Put, it on, put, put it on the list, right? And here, list, here I'll, list. I'll, I'll send you, I'll send you a, a puzzle bottle together. <laughs> <laughs> nice. yeah, and, I, and I was going to say on the I flip knew. side, the, the washing machine, if I ever get it working, is going to be expensive. And <laughs> it's just, it's still laser cut, but... Um, will it? Will it? If it actually washes my clothes, man, it will not wash your clothes. But you can oh. see, like, I will not be able to sell that. Anzo was the uh, four four layers of wood there, and this guy's it's beefier. And there's like there's a lot going on in there, but right now half of the stuff that's going on in there doesn't work like I want it to. So it's we'll see. But just I mean, just that prototype probably costs me. You know, I mean, obviously, when you make 50 of them, it's cheaper than just making one. But I've spent, like, $300 probably on the prototype. Um, yeah, but you can sell it as the first, as the prototype for a premium. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> you get your money back. Trust me, you will. I've got, a, I've got my, um, opening my, oh, this is the wrong box. Wrong box. Different puzzle. So, uh, there's a puzzle box actually made. Um really easy mechanism that I saw somewhere else and then some guy was like charging around the leg court and I was like I can take that for super cheap and I did and uh, there's even like felt the inside and it looks really nice uh, and I've got I've got a few like that I wish I knew where my other one was Ooh. I don't know this is a puzzle about puzzle I got from um, who is this? Um, yeah, right down here. It's an improved puzzle box, and it's a it's pretty kind of rough shape. Uh, the reason why is this was uh, this was a copy of it made by Lee Krasnow, and this is the one he would use to demonstrate the puzzle to everybody. So it's seen a lot of wear, <laughs> and you know. Which is good because this puzzle, when Lee normally makes it, is so tight, it's practically impossible to take apart because it's like just the air being pushed out of the puzzle causes a slight vacuum, which keeps the damn thing together. It's so precision made. And this one's just been used enough so you can actually take it apart without losing your mind. <laughs> I had that same problem with the, uh, uh, not same problem, but the same, the same effect happened when I got, uh, the pin block case. Yeah. Uh, when I won that, and I, I, I'm pushing the pieces, and it's just like they wouldn't go in. It was just creating this, this, this like puff of air as it's coming out. I was like, oh, it's just that nice. <laughs> yeah, which is you know, which is amazing because you want your puzzles to keep your world calm. But you know, it's a challenge. Anyway, um, he, he gave me this one as a sort of a consolation for one of the puzzles that he sent driving with the blue bond broke. He said I sent it back to him to see if he could fix it, which he did. And then he sent me this and said, and here's the makeup for the 
for the broken when the hassle you had to go through to send me the, <laughs> the one that came apart. So, I'm cool okay. with it. Okay. Yeah. Good. Before, before Corona hit, I would go to uh, speed cubing competitions with a big old box of uh, some of my uh, like slide puzzles and a bunch of twisty puzzles that I made. Um, not all of them like for sale ones, but like just just mods that I made. And uh, I just sit at a table because I actually know um, the guy who coordinates all the uh, all the competitions in my area. I actually just bumped into him on the bus one day. Oh, cool. Very funny. So, because uh, I was I was playing around with like a really old five by five, and he was like, "Dude, he's like, I've never seen a tiled five by five. I haven't seen one in like ages." He was like, "Can I get a picture of that?" And I was like, "Uh, that's weird, but sure." And he was like, <laughs> "Yeah." He was like, "I run all the speed cubing competitions in the area," and I was like, "No shit, really?" Yeah. So I so I take this big old case there, <laughs> just full of cube mods and stuff, and and. Uh, and they, you know, so my personal copies get a little wear just because so many kids pick them up and play with them. It was so fun. It's a shame that we're going to hit and now we, we don't have that anymore. It's all digital I now. I watched that documentary the other day. On oh, that. yeah. The speed cubing one? Yeah. yeah. See, I'm not a speed cuber myself, but, uh, but I, do, I do enjoy solving a new twisty puzzle. That's uh, definitely fun. Love that one. That one's one of my favorites is it all just memorization of the of the algorithms or um, the... i would say um sometimes yes okay um but once you once you kind of know how to solve like a three by three then you start extrapolating and you can make your own uh strategies for other puzzles that might be similar but require a different way of thinking like um knowing how to solve a three by three really helps me solve this uh, which is essentially a bandage three by three um I don't know if you can see it, but there's just these little cracks here where I've bandaged the three layers of a the two two layers of a mirror cube together um, to make what I call an eye cuboid, um, and um, it's it's tricky, but ha knowing how to solve a three by three by itself didn't mean I could solve this puzzle. Um, I ended up using kind of a three by three method, but. I had to make some modifications to it and it was very fun to figure out what those modifications were because like I had to figure out that I needed to solve them in a certain order otherwise it was too difficult to um to solve them later so like it was like okay you got to solve it in a certain orientation uh which is not something that matters for a three by three and then it was like okay when you're trying to shuffle around the corner pieces I couldn't use the traditional three by three algorithm so I had to use one that was kind of weird and didn't didn't use like the bottom layer at all because if you if you try to store stuff down in this bottom layer, you end up like, you end up kind of bandaging stuff if you do it wrong. You know, you end up bandaging like that, and you're just like, I don't know, it won't turn anymore. So it was actually so a lot of the, fun. Um, so the grand to... unified theorem of uh, n by n cubes. <laughs> but yeah, uh, still haven't figured out how to solve this one. Uh, but I my my speed cubing friends are like, oh, that's easy, and I'm just like, yeah, I'm not a speed cuber yet, so. So I, I don't I don't I don't quite get it yet, <laughs> you know I'm not there yet. But I mean, just having the basic understanding of how to do like beginner's method on a three by three, and I'm able to solve a lot of twisty puzzles, you know. Um, not any of the really difficult stuff, but uh, but uh, I mean, you know, there's there's I'm I'm I'm, I'm intermediate ish on twisty puzzles. Love these two, love these shape shifters. Some of my favorites. Twenty years ago, they would have called you a phenomenon. <laughs> yeah. Love that. I never developed a thing for twisties. It just never released my endorphins like other puzzles do. <laughs> and that's uh, that's just how it works. Some puzzles work for you. Yeah, I'm not a I'm not a twisty fan. I I can't get into it. Yeah, you know, I'm not either, and... but I have a lot of respect for people who do because yeah, it did. One of the things you learn about puzzles is that. They tell you the how people what people's affinities for them and how well they solve them it tells you a lot about how their brain works. It really does. It yeah, tells and you know, about how they think. I, I actually my first real puzzle experience was a fifteen puzzle. To be totally honest, it was a fifteen puzzle and that was uh where I started and uh you know, it was like I don't know, high school. Uh I was probably in high school at the time. And I like just 
fiddled around with it enough and I just figured it out it out on my own and I figured out like a really easy strategy and I could solve any 15 puzzle in like 20 seconds flat and everyone was always like what how do you do, how'd you do that and I'm just like I don't know it was just it just came to me it was really easy once I figured it out and that's that's kind of why I love you know doing the chromas and stuff because they offer a challenge that doesn't it doesn't deviate from the solve of the team puzzle but uh, it creates like an additional challenge on top of it. Same with like uh, when I do like the marble puzzles. Those are always fun because they're kind of three dimensional, but also just kind of constrained enough to be as easy as a slide puzzle. It's one of my favorites. I just love the, uh, the sound that makes me turn it. <laughs> I love that the the marbles actually kind of self index too. I always thought that was interesting. Kind of seeing like move up and then down as they're going over the little dividers between them, and they'll like stop exactly where they need to go and just like. Well, that, that was just serendipity that that worked out because I did not plan that. <laughs> Gives you that kind of feedback, satisfying feedback, like a ratchet, ratchet yep. mechanism. Exactly. It, it's like a ratchet. It's, it's really funny, actually. Yeah. That, not not just that one, too. Oh, I got to take this phone call. Okay, guys. That's probably a good cue for me to uh, say sayonara. Yeah, uh, same here. Me, man. Yeah, I think I'm going to head out too, guys. It's been fun. All right. Have a good time, good man. Good with that lockout. Dude, I'm not going to be able to go to bed till I get this thing open, so. <laughs> You're the only one working on it. I know. <laughs> All right. I'll, I'll see, see you all guys later then. Yep, right. sounds good. Okay, man. Take care. Yeah. See you guys. Bye, Bye guys.